Hello everyone, <laughs> straight in, welcome to the capsule, yet again, um, we have a special episode, I say this every week, but we have a special episode with special guests, everyone who comes through here is super special, um, but we have a good old friend Tally, who has been here, we established for coming up to three years or so now on yeah. this pod, so definitely a regular here, but we also have someone who, if you're a loyal listener of The Capsule, <laughs> you will have seen that since, it's been about a year now that we've been looking at these videos, I feel like. Yeah. Because our first, no, maybe not a year. Yeah, it's been over a year. Because our first one was when, remember the when I took a break? One. Yeah, and I came back, it was me, you and Abe. Yeah. One of the first times, actually, and we had the half-eaten snacks. And Abe had never seen a jungle video. Yep. Yeah. The so, half-eaten snacks didn't go down well. Oh, that no, was they such didn't. an no, hilarious... They How dare we How eat dare we have half wear eaten. sweats? Yep. Um, so if you are not aware, we have been reacting to jungle videos for quite a while because A, they're dope and B, uh, they feature dance prominently. So we felt more than qualified to talk about them. <laughs> Whether we are or not is another, <laughs> is another situation. But um, yeah, so we have in the capsule house, the director of the jungle videos, and I want you- no, absolutely not. To sell the debate not. once absolutely. and for all. Oh, yeah, I've been waiting for this. <laughs> How? You tarnished my family name for, for, so many, for so many years. How do we pronounce it? good job all my grandparents are dead. That's all I'm gonna oh, say. No. I know you two but, are gonna get on like a house yeah. on fire. Wait, let's pull that a bit closer. No worries. Um, so, because, you know what even more messed me up is like I said it on one of the pods and then Lee said it. I said it about five Five times and then Lee, Lee got it right it. and he goes he takes a go and yeah Lee got it right and I'm like but I can't remember which one is which yes. got it right almost instantaneously I think you got it right the first time as well so it's a, it's I think my before it became a joke <laughs> yeah my in instinct. English is di placido di placido yeah what but if I you're in, a, in Italian pronunciation would be di placido di placido what did I say who was right here not me. <laughs> what was your vote? You were right, I and said, then you just riffed on and it. And then I just kept going and lost it. <laughs> I went to borderline, you know, like offensiveness. Yeah, I yeah. did. I do remember bringing this yes. out. Yeah, I do. I said placido, <laughs> which sounds like the Italian without the right C. De placido. Yeah. But De, so placido. De placido, yeah. Like pl placebo. Placido. Placebo, placebo yeah. Great. Um, in my defense, I didn't think you were ever going to hear it. <laughs> that is fair. That is fair. Um, I was gassed. I was, uh, I was like very excited to see someone going into detail. Oh, we, yeah, we loved the videos and, um, yeah, I think definitely if you haven't seen them, people at home, go and check them out. The mm -hmm. our reactions and the, the jungle videos. Um, yeah, I think it's sick for us to obviously talk about stuff that like, I love the crossover to between like the mainstream media type of stuff and mm. dance where it's like i mean we've spoke about it loads but where um it's like a, a big band that like like i have friends that don't dance or anything that are like oh i'm going to see jungle and but we're like we, not only do we know all the dancers in it and stuff but we also it's like real good choreo that's mm -hmm. in there and it's like it might as well be like a dance concept video but it's in a, for a big band so yeah pleasure to have you here is what i'm trying to say and thank I'm you for uh reacting to our reaction videos <laughs> <laughs> um so just before we start because i have questions for charlie we have some audience questions did you get any on the iii i did indeed cool so we have questions for you from us and from them um just before we start it's not a full news section but we did want to talk about summer dance quickly because it's happening <laughs> at the moment uh by the time right now i think is the hip-hop prelims have just finished and house dance forever is starting this mm -hmm. evening um what happened so far we had the whacking i don't think there was anyone from the uk in the whacking or locking in terms of people that got through mm -hmm. um but they're really dope and i was talking about this on my story but Obviously, I'm teaching my structure and presentation workshop coming up, but whacking, especially in whacking forever, because it's like high level people and it's good. Um, it's They're all in one place, basically, mm -hmm. but it's a great place to go if you want to learn how to like perform as a battle dancer. Just go and watch even right. the videos because it's like they're they're so um, it's so built into like whacking culture. And I think maybe this is something from the choreo side where because uh, I've seen um, Jay Ravel? 
Sure. Yep. Oh, yeah, he was on expand. the pod. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> expand on what you... That's going to be one of those things that people see, the one-liner, and they're right. going to be like, what style is from? <laughs> what's, what's behind that then? <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> he was teaching a workshop on, um, like, performance and stuff. It, was, uh-huh. it wasn't a choreo workshop. It was just, right. like, performance. And I was like, that's kind of... the vo- sure? I think so. It was for... He was the one that was on the pod. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think she... Because that was when I maybe first met him. Fair. And it was for a girl called Demi had a workshop. Oh, Six called, Styles. Six Styles. Got it. He was I'm teaching there, it there. I'm with you. Yeah. I'm there. Anyway, so my point is like that, it, it kind of made me think of my workshop of the structure and presentation because it's like, but I think it's more built into being a choreo dancer because you're, you're learning choreo and you're learning to choreograph or to dance, but you it's built into what you do that, you're going to need to perform this. Right. So like looking, you can't look down while doing the choreo. You can't like not have something going on with your face. It's like, you just get taught that in day one of being a choreo dancer kind of thing. Yes. Now. Sure. Right. And I think uh, with a like, I want to say like maybe pop in hip hop house breaking, it's not really built into our Mm -hmm. styles Mm -hmm. where um, whacking and Vogue and Crump, it's like built into the dance styles that like mm-hmm. you learn this thing and almost alongside you learn how to perform it. Right. And um, there's a clip of, um, do you know Nene? She's from Montreal. Um, dope dancer. She won. Mm-hmm. There's a clip of her and it's like, she, um, she just doesn't miss a beat. Like unbelievable performance. And it's like, she takes, she's wearing like a skirt kind of tutu thing that's mm-hmm. over the top of leggings. And it kind of comes down and she pulls it off and like steps out of it, kicks it up, holds it in her hand. I and like, see that. Flick, yeah, did you I see that see clip? That. Right. And it's like, if you look, what, what really impressed me on the structure and presentation side is like, she does all that and is on beat, still looking up, still performing to the audience. She mm-hmm. still keeps in her phrasing. She doesn't get distracted one single part and it still makes it like, it doesn't look like she's, um, oh, hold on. Let me just take off my skirt. Right, <laughs> it's right. like it's for, it's part of the performance for the audience mm-hmm. and it's like i've seen poppers get distracted because like their glasses went like this you know what i mean and it's like <laughs> do you think it was deliberate or think it was uh i it could be either. well that's the thing is like the fact that i don't know right is what yeah. makes her so dope because it's like yeah. it could be that oh she felt it like coming off a bit and went all right i have to take this off mm-hmm. or she was like okay this is gonna be my like, outfit change in the middle of it but mm-hmm. um yeah it's just like the the especially on the presentation side it's like i think a lot of even like people lower down in the skill scale Mm -hmm. i guess are are still so like up exactly and it's like i feel like i mean maybe as a director this you can speak on that but like i feel like there's certain dancers that are fantastic dancers but you couldn't just say go and do a freestyle set in a music video or on stage and like there's some that are like some whackers that might not be as good as the other dancers, but you put them in a music video and they look great. Just do one eight of freestyle. Okay, done. That's the, mm, that's yeah. their cut. Yeah. I, ha- I do have a lot. Um, I see dancers that I really want to get to castings. Yeah. And then the, the choreographer I'm working with will be like, they'll do a wince. Yeah. And I'll be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. Oh, oh, can I swear? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, please do. <laughs> we <laughs> encourage thank, it. Thank God. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah. And I'll say like, I really want to see them and the choreographer will wince and they're usually always right. And mm. then it's just that, yeah, they're, they have all the technical ability, but they've got nothing to like sell it. Yeah. And the selling of it is, I've seen people win jobs and castings just on sheer yeah, yeah. like charisma. Charisma, and, and yeah, hundred percent. And it's yeah. like, not that technique doesn't matter in music videos, but it's like in a battle, yes, we're ticking off. Like, did you get everything perfect? And maybe the presentation stuff is less important. Mm-hmm. But on a job, it's like, okay, for that four seconds that you're on screen and you want to just sell that what's going on it's like does it really matter if everything was perfect or does it matter if you can smile and look up and, it certainly doesn't matter when you you're know? dancing for a muggle like me because like we do, we, like if so it looks many, good you're, you're happy i've been cussed by so many choreographers for the people that i let through and the people that i send home oh mad but but, but sometimes it's like it's, just, it's a feeling more than anything and then you get the really crazy dancers that have it both, both. And, yeah yes. and then you like and there's, a, there's and then like another level yeah like spoken movement when like anytime spoken movement comes to a casting of mine it's like jesus walked into the room <laughs> like, okay you've got every single fucking foundation there is and also like i can't take my Presence, eyes on you yeah. I, I've, I've i've cast him for things that he's completely wrong for <laughs> and the client's just been like what, you, what do you mean why is he on the list you like, will he's see the greatest yeah thing. wait until he gets he's the greatest thing you've ever seen oh, sick. you should re- reimagine the whole idea around him that is yeah, yeah. well that is like the goal is to have mm. both and that's when 
Hello. You're being attacked. That's when you can, when you can sell, like if you can sell bad technique or mm -hmm. low level technique, imagine when you can sell the good, you know what uh -huh. I mean? It's like that part you can learn the kind of, oh, you can learn both, but like that's the whole point of my workshop. But <laughs> <laughs> Sign up, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can't learn anything from my workshop. Um, but yeah, when, when you can have that naturally or it's something that, that comes easily to you, it's like, I think it's, um, it'll take you further quicker mm -hmm. i would say like mm -hmm. people that can perform because it's like again you might again uh, you're on stage you mess up the choreography a little bit you've got to sell that you can't just stand there going oh mom yes. you know it's like if you can sell it and like freestyle your way until the next section and make a little transition and then go again you're like mm -hmm. all right i didn't really see anything yeah it's just i remember in classes where you know a mistake would happen or in rehearsals and just someone just like fuck and it's like <laughs> we're gonna need to figure out how to make that not a thing yeah because you can't say fuck in the middle of a job like or like you know on i stage. mean you can't i mean sure good but <laughs> it's gonna be written all over your face and that's not ideal um yeah. yeah i think you also learn with choreo classes and especially more commercial leaning like mistakes happen but it is the recovery mm. and yeah and part of the recovery isn't even about getting back into the choreo like you say it is like on your face and in the performance aspect of it mm. so yeah that's interesting yeah so is that something that look because you said now it's taught but do you feel like before when you started it wasn't no thing? well there's just a camera in every dance space now yeah. mm. which i guess as much as we've talked about it being like an, a bit too much mm -hmm. but that is the side that maybe this generation of choreo dancers have more ingrained because if they've got a camera in their face every well, I think it. Dep I I haven't been to many choreo classes where the teacher is actively is making the presence of the camera a thing mm. in the class. Right. It's not like right now. It's performance time. Smaller groups find the lens. Right. Like say X Y Z to the uh, viewer. Right. Like it's just there. Which is kind of mad. Mm, yeah it's like it. if you're gonna yeah, have, have it that? in fringe on the space you mm. may as well make it a part yeah, of yeah, it yeah. and if i say that if you're going to have it in my <laughs> face with a gimbal doing all that <laughs> shit you, you may as well make it yeah. a part of it because i do tend to look over it sure um because that isn't generally what i'm going into class spaces for sure. but if it was you know, the teacher built it in, I would feel like I wasn't being a good student if I didn't do that. Yeah, um, and it's like, you know, you're there to work on that particular skill, so it's fine for that. And it's like, if you're not going to build it in, keep the camera behind or somewhere that isn't so... Yeah, or maybe like film like the face. one and only final group and then not all of them. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. pick four at the end that are like your friends or whatever, film with them, film the whole class once and then leave it. Like, don't have to yes. film every single There's group. a choreographer in the States called Miguel Zarate and he posted a old performance that he did with Rihanna and one of his points in his caption was like, there was no IG, mm. you were known and put on when you got the shot. Like, if you got the shot on stage, if you found that, like, red light, like, oh. that is how you made your name. And really? that is a thing. That so they was were like, oh, who was that dancer? That was a th Absolutely. Wow. Like, you know, when the whole thing comes to an end and that yeah. end pose is there. And <laughs> sometimes choreographers are like, do not look down. <laughs> like, artist only yeah. does that. Look elsewhere. And there's always one that's just like, straight at the camera. There with the A-list star. <laughs> like, <laughs> and also me. <laughs> um, but that's yeah. amazing. Uh, tangent number one. Yes. Because I don't know where we started. Uh, whacking. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a perfect demonstration of what happens. Yeah. Um, the I, would other, also, I would also yeah, just yeah, quickly yeah. say that there's like the same way that the freestylers sometimes can't sell it to camera. Mm. There's also a whole bunch of choreo dancers that when I asked them to freestyle, freestyle. for a minute, Absolutely. you would think I asked them to fucking walk, walk on water. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's oh, just, tell them to get on the floor, Charlie. <laughs> tell them to do floor work. Why is that worse? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that, and that <laughs> to me is kind of like, it's crazy because they were going yeah. to all these classes. Yeah. Mm. And I feel like they're doing the same. I mean, some of them, I mean, I'm not I'm throwing shots here, but I'm saying no. as part of a dancer's development. Yeah. You would think that, that that's part of. Yeah. I think, to, yeah. I think it's invaluable. Yeah. If you want to like, even for freestylers, it's the reverse, but it's like, you know, people that are like good battlers or whatever. And they're like, yeah, I want to work professionally. I'm like, if we've spoke about this, but it's like, if you, cannot do any choreo mm -hmm. you're not you're not useless but you're next to useless because yeah. it's like 
at very least, you might have to be able to watch the choreo and know which part mm -hmm. to jump in to do your freestyle. Mm -hmm. And if you mm -hmm. don't, if they say, right, it's after the third eight after you hear this sound, it's like the third eight? What do you, when do I, how do I? And it's like, you, you don't have no experience understanding choreo. So you can't time that, let alone if I say, do the last eight of choreo, then freestyle, then do the mm -hmm. first eight of the next section and then go off. Mm -hmm. It's like, mm -hmm. you you have no, like, then it's like, oh, you can't even pick up a basic eight count. It's like, you're useless. Even if your skill is great, I still need to fit you into this. And it's probably yes. the same yeah. if you're a choreo dancer. It's like, at some point, you need to like hype mm. the crowd or just move across stage. And we don't, we're not going to choreograph you going over there, but yeah. you can't just do, 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 like walk over. Yeah. So it's like, you know, to be able to freestyle something, I guess, but... It's also interesting because like, like I say, for a muggle like me, I'll see a dancer on Instagram doing a crazy bit of choreo. Yeah. It feels like it has some kind of expressiveness mm -hmm, to it. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I'm, when I see you in a room a week later and they can't give me anything because yeah. it's not a rehearsed step, I'm like, right. but mm. you were like, you so look passionate. so funky. Well, I'm in it. You look so funky last week on the ground. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. it's just not real. I it's think I've said to students of mine that, it's, at, it's such an advanced skill that they're exercising in like finding a way to express themselves mm -hmm. through someone else's choreographic expression, which is in response to someone else's expression yeah. through the song. Yeah. So like if you're wow. finding a way to get yourself through that, when just given the floor just for you, it's it's odd that you can't do mm. that. Yeah. That's a really you're on art, the artist this week, aren't you? Yeah. That's why you're full of gems. Your <laughs> your gems are flowing. Thanks. I'll take it. I haven't <laughs> said that this week. But uh, no, but as in like you're in the mood of like right. dissecting and talking about stuff. Smoke may follow. Yeah. No, smoke <laughs> smoke may follow. not. Yeah. <laughs> or if we don't get it here, this, then <laughs> it you're might getting just be it. potpourri today, guys. <laughs> a light bit of potpourri. <laughs> Um, the other thing on Summer Dance Forever before we finish on that is I wanted to talk about Paris. Paris. That we did not wonderful. rehearse. We I, rehearsed. I let you guys down on that, sorry. <laughs> that was fine. Yeah, I you were it's fine, Charlie. Me. I didn't get a memo. <laughs> Stop the whole pot again. <laughs> um, yes, so Paris was killing it. She um, got through to the semi finals. Which in summer dance is a bit. Do you know much about summer dance? Not that much. Okay, so for anyone at home that doesn't as well. Um, it's probably the biggest battle competition in the world at the moment. Definitely the biggest in terms of reputation. Mm -hmm. And the way that they do it is they take 12, usually we take 16 and then it's like knock out like the World Cup down mm -hmm. to two. In this one, they do 12 dancers and then they knock it down to three, which is usually weird, but then there's three judges. So then the three dancers battle the three judges. Oh, wow. And then uh, you'll be left with obviously three winners and one of them can call someone back who got knocked out earlier. Anyone oh, that they man. want. So they can call someone back, battle them. Then you have a normal two and one, right? And when it's judges, it's like, um, it's also another concept that they've like, they're famous for, which is because obviously if, um, no, it's after the judges are knocked out, I think. But basically it's like, let's say me and you battle. There's no judges left. So, I mean, and you were a judge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but then at the end they say, did you win or you lose? And you say, I think I won. And then I say, I think I won. Okay, we let the crowd vote. If you say, you know what? Honestly, I think Luke won. Mm. I just go straight through. Okay. Or if you say you won and then I say I lost, you go through, right? Or whatever. So uh, yeah, Paris, a friend of the show and um, a fantastic dancer, got through to the semis, which I believe is after the judges battle because she battled Slim Boogie. Did you know this? No. it's I haven't watched the full battle with Slim because it's uh, I haven't, uh, paid for the full thing yet which i will um mm -hmm. but she beat everyone to get to the judges battle she picked slim boogie apparently and who is like one of the world's mm -hmm. best poppers um and she battled slim and he said i think i lost Paris, which is big and he was yeah. like he did a little speech from what i saw on the instagram that like he like because obviously they get the mic and right. it used to be you win or you lose win and now it's like you win or you lose I'd like to thank my mum <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like it becomes a whole, a whole thing a whole speech and here's why but with I mean Slim didn't do that but uh, he basically said um, I I uh, what did he say? He said basically like, oh, I was speaking to Paris just recently and saying like she needs to come back to battling more because she's like so dope. She's wanted like he gave her like big props. What's and he's the second name Paris Crossley. Crossley. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, I wanted her for a jungle thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, she's awesome. Yeah, she's mm. great and just a lovely person as well. And just 
<clears throat> not that it, it's not that it matters, mm. but to look at her mm -hmm. without having seen her dance, you wouldn't expect her to oh, move the sure. yeah, way that she. Yeah, yeah. she's a does. like monster, and also she like really undersells. Even on our pod, when she was like, "Yeah, I don't really see myself as a battler," but when she battles, it's like oh, I'm going to take you down. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Which mm -hmm. is like, mm -hmm. it's good that she has that ability to switch off and switch on. You know? Yes, because um, some people that say like, "Oh, I don't really care about battles," like you see it when they battle. You know what I mean? It's like, I can Me. see that you don't get it. <laughs> Me. Yeah, it's also like, Going why? Going to the pub in between. <laughs> like, why am I even fighting between. for this? I don't care. And someone's like, you got through, yeah. come back. So, oh, <laughs> I just wanted to see what prelims felt like. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's dope that, uh, obviously that not only did Paris get through, do well, she's, you know, she's got through at Summer Dance before and done mm -hmm. well there. So it's not a surprise, but yeah, for her to get that far and for her to get that far by slim, giving her the win which you know on that sort of stage is like nobody's giving away easy wins like mm -hmm. he, it must have meant something for him in that yes. moment to be like no she, she took deserves it. this um and then yeah she lost to nelson in the net in the semis who he went on to win so that's I saw in the comments he called her the mvd of the day who did slim nelson called her the what's it Paris. oh most valuable dancer yeah. i was like most valuable dancer um did he that's yeah. cool he wrote it in the comments mm. Mm, very interesting that's good we like no, that. it's sick yeah um yeah i have more to say about that off the pod but um <laughs> but yeah no um i'm happy that paris got that and i have uh my so here's my opinion on why paris is not only so dope but why i think people resonate with her dance so much or like to to look at it because mm -hmm. So I think what I would say about Paris is that she's her movement is very organic. Right. And I say this a lot like when I teach. But what I mean by what my definition of organic movement is, is movement that kind of originates from the like head, shoulders, chest and hips. Because for me, that's the the core of your body and the core of where all movement comes from. So if you if you turn sideways look at yourself in the mirror and go to like just take a step forward it's not your foot that just st sticks out you lean forward with your hips first to shift your weight and then you step right so like movement to try walking like that now. I, I do it in just my workshop to just to make a point and it's hilarious <laughs> but um when you yeah so a lot of these movements that we have that are very natural and organic come from these this core part of our body right mm -hmm. so i think one thing that paris does is and again this is i i'm more attuned to it because i'm like teaching it now but like one thing that she does is if you watch let's say that round in summer dance at no point is her head shoulders chest and hips not engaged it's right. never in the centered mm -hmm. um just chilling point it's always engaged somehow it can be moved or it can be there's tension in it but it's it's always a part of every movement, right? Mm -hmm. So whether she's just sticking her hands out, it's like hands, but the shoulders are pushed forward or that the back is pushed backwards to it, mm -hmm. emphasize it. Mm -hmm. And then, so there's that side of it where any movement, any shape is always engaging this, which it feels fuller and bigger and, and it, it feels like a more, like I said, organic uh, movement. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is that a lot of times with battle styles and it happens more in popping, but it happens in every style is we have this tendency to have our uh, static center point and then we kind of reach out to do a shape or to create let's say in air quotes so like we do waves or whatever and then we reset and we pull back in and then go a different direction mm -hmm. and then we reset and then we go out again and i think what paris does brilliantly like i said in that round is she will go where the movement is taking her and wherever that is she'll create so it's almost like there's no like, oh, I need to be in the right place to do these cool moves right, that I've right, practiced, right. which we all do. And, it, you know, I'm not saying it's inherently a bad thing, but she'll just lean sideways, right? Because I feel like leaning sideways, but she won't come back to do waves. She'll just stay leaning sideways and start waving or mm -hmm. she'll go backwards and just go and be like, well, all right, I guess I'm going to the floor. And while I'm on the floor, I'm just going to create or, mm -hmm. and it's, it. I think for me, the, what that achieves is like you you the whole round feels fluid and like a uh, very organic in its flow as well mm -hmm. and like it doesn't feel like she's trying to do any one thing it feels like she's just moving where the movement takes her and she's just finds creativity in any one position now mm -hmm. the probably i would speculate that the genius in paris's dance is that she probably does have stuff that she's like she probably knows when she goes to the floor how she likes to move what's comfortable mm -hmm. you know when she does this <laughs> she knows where she's flexible she understands her body and her range of movement 
but it doesn't look like that and it doesn't feel like that mm -hmm. which is why i think so many people are like wrong wow. yeah because it's like this feels so like just natural and like not like your pre-rehearsed moves or you're trying to hit beats or you're trying to entertain us it feels like you're just moving through this space mm -hmm. freely mm -hmm. you know what i mean but mm -hmm. that's why i think like the organic thing is like you can learn to dance organically yes. you know what i mean it's not a you either have it or you don't yeah no i'd say so i don't can't say I actually know Paris that well as a dance or journey wise, mm -hmm. but I guess where I was most tapped in was in, was outside of popping actually. Oh, I mean, it's always, it's informed her. I can see sure. it in her movement, but just in the more like experimental contemporary looking at least mm. space. Um, so I can see the two things when I, cause I haven't seen her in battle spaces that really my, uh, that's a me thing she's clearly been in them yeah yeah but, yeah. In, but, yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah i'm actually thinking it's like it is more rare than yeah than, so to yeah. see that round it did like both parises that i've seen it was like a perfect so you could combo. see it what you what you knew of her you could see it in yeah, her. yeah yeah oh. yeah absolutely which is everything you just spoke yeah. to just like the playful nature of it all and like this is where i am so i'm going to move from here and not the form mm -hmm. and the structures that tend to come with with it yeah 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 gorge and um yeah just doesn't give a shit in battle like is not scared by anyone which mm -hmm. is like that is just seasoned battler yeah like, yeah, yeah. Nelson's, especially at that level of summer oh. dance like that's got to be mad intimidating yeah for most yeah 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 even if you're amazing mm. because it's still like you could be there's a, there's a certain level of intimidation if you're in the top 16 and you it's like me battling Nelson and I'd be I'd be scared right or there's you get to you're on that level like Paris where she's semi-finals and now you're like well what if people are expecting me to win or what like mm -hmm. there's a different type of pressure that mm -hmm. she's probably feeling there but she's just still like no I'm just here to do my thing which is dope yeah so yeah congrats congrats shout out to Paris um Nene who won the uh whacking whacking who is um a Montre Montrealian so <laughs> so uh my my second peoples um and yeah we don't know about hip-hop pre-selections i don't think i know evian was there speaking of montrealians hey jenny lou <laughs> right on cue. Right on cue. <laughs> yeah no we don't have any um list for the hip-hop yet but i did see evian was there i mean people watching this home by the time this is out you'll already know the answers to this right. stuff but i'm saying it anyway uh clara's judging the house dance forever Ooh. uh so she will be battling someone whoever calls her out i do see on the stories a joel i do also see a frankie i feel Oh, I feel like Jeff said he was. And a Jeff. Oh, Jevin! <laughs> so. Go get him, Tiger. Yeah, this is on the <laughs> Summer Dance Forever uh, ones that they've chosen to share. So there might be a bunch of other people That's from the really UK exciting. out there. Jevin very, very nearly in everything but the girl. Oh, really? 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 He Which is one? Sick. The first one. The uh, honey and Ken. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we reacted no, to I, that we one. We did too. react to that one, didn't we? Um, yeah, because I called him nothing but the girl nothing but the girl <laughs> no, it's like you know it's everything but the girl um and he sang that song really badly yes and yeah. i miss you mm. <laughs> like banger da -da -da that i'm old enough to know From when it came, came out, out. <laughs> i think i was 11 um so yeah shout out to everyone that has done well at summer dance will do well is doing well we're excited to see and you guys at home will already know what happened so yeah um so that being said i think that's the most pressing news on to charlie <laughs> and jungle um you are you're speaking on behalf of everyone today I am. um <laughs> So, yeah, let's go back, way back. So, we obviously didn't know about Volcano when we first started reacting to the videos, right? But no. This was the plan from, like, everything was recorded in one go, if I'm correct, right? Um, it's an interesting question. <laughs> uh, I mean, it, the plan, it, it all started from the previous album. Okay. Um, we did a film called Loving in Stereo for the album, Loving in Stereo. Mm-hmm. Um, and we had a plan to like to make a volcano style film for that, and we we swung and we kind of uh, came up a little short. Um, right, it was incredible, but it was more sort of fourteen music videos stitched together than a like, film. Like a film. Oh, I'm just realizing which one you mean. I think is that the one that yeah. was kind of done in COVID ish era. Yes, it was fresh out of COVID, and we uh, that Jordan Franklin was in and. 
One of George the videos scans past all the different colored yeah, rooms. Yeah, that's truth. Yeah. That one, yeah. Yeah. Um, Great. I think a lot of times... That wasn't a... What? A l- you swung and what? <laughs> but maybe in terms of the links. Oh, the videos are incredible. Ah, okay. The right. videos are as incredible. A, as a... A I mean, like, like, yeah, form. with all these, um, D- with, yeah, truth. Mm, these yeah. Ones. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I do. I, I'm aware yeah. of all I of these. I think a lot of times with jungle, because they sort of dip in and out, people don't really see the like the edges of the campaigns, right? Mm. So when right. we're talking about it, they'll talk about keep moving and things, right? And then yes, it all yes, like yes. drifts into one. Mm-hmm. Um, but this latest volcano film, yeah, it kind of came about from the 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 boys and them yeah, and and this new girl Lydia that they're working with kind of found a new sound mm. and we did problems and good times yeah mm-hmm. like a little double header ah. while they were making the album okay and oh that was a really a kind of like a as in you shot the video while they were making the rest of the music album Ooh, there you go that happens all the time that's all right um so G- Josh and Lydia and Tom they made those two tracks and they were kind of like a weird sort of like moment where it was like, oh, that's what the whole thing's going to sound like now. Right. And they made them so quickly. Mm. And we're always in a process of like an album gets made. We write a film idea. We spend a shit of time trying to get the money for it to happen. Mm-hmm. And this time Josh was just like, we've made the music. Let's, let's make a video right now. Mm. There's Joshua on Instagram. And then we were shooting the videos real quick. See. And that kind of, fit fitted in straight away to the pre like the, the idea we were writing at the time mm-hmm. um and then yeah and then we then we wrote, wrote volcano and went looking for shmonies so can i yeah. take us back a step to sure. like what the connect to jungle like because i know have heavy california was the first right no for you he- oh was it not for heavy you not fun- i know the connection with jungle huh. goes back to the very beginning Okay. I was, I was uh, working at a production company. I was an in-house editor. Mm-hmm. I used to drink at a pub in Askey Road. <laughs> As all good stories begin. As all good yeah. stories begin. <laughs> the watering hole. <laughs> hang at the end of the bar. And then this kid came up from behind the bar who was a pizza delivery boy and said, you work in production. Can you listen to my music? Wow. Which if you work in production... Is the worst thing right. that a new I'm apprentice sure. can say to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's always going to be garbage. <laughs> um, yes, similar to being sent like a Wii transfer link to someone's like uni piece or something. Yeah. Or just like a piece of dance they want to What do you think watch. of this? Yeah. What do you think of this seven minutes of me fumbling around? <laughs> um, but yeah, it was um, it was the early the early stuff that then became Jungle. Wow. Um, and then, yeah, we, yeah so we, we made all, we made, uh, I made the original videos with a, with a friend of ours called Ollie, and uh, amazing. So, what was the so first video you did? The very, f- the very first video, um, platoon, platoon. So I've I- genuinely seen them all. So, yeah, no way. Mm. So, oh, is that before this? Yeah, of course it is. Yeah. Platoon is the very first one. You've been there since I did not. Know I think you've this been busy earning one might be yeah. the first one I saw of Jungles. That's Kendra, isn't it? Kendra choreographed that. Oh, I yeah, didn't know did, that. Yeah. I just knew um, Cedric and so a that, couple of others. Way back when. So that platoon video mm-hmm. is was shot in... Is that Tara? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she's in the whole... Well, she's in loads of the early Oh, ones. I clearly haven't seen so enough of the early ones. I was working in a production oh, company cute. in Westbourne Studios, mm-hmm. which is this place underneath the Westway. Mm-hmm. Little complex. AMCK used to be based AMCK there. AMCK used to be there. So Josh sent me a picture of a break dancing, a little boy in an estate. And I walked across the courtyard mm-hmm. to AMCK and ah, said to AMCK's wild. receptionist, Pashley, that I wanted to talk to Aisha okay. about a kid. And Pashley That's was representing why, Terror. Okay. And okay, said, okay. You should get Terror. And then we filmed in the act. That, that, that first platoon video is actually shot in Westmore Studios. Yeah, because it kind of looks like a casting. Yeah. Mm. And that was nuts as well, because that, like, that was before they signed to Excel. And we put that video on Vimeo and then on like, we put it on Vimeo on the weekend and uh-huh. on a Monday morning I woke up and I called Josh and I was like, I think something's broken because <laughs> people are watching million, it. <laughs> millions of views on Vimeo. Wow. Wild. And Justin Timberlake, I think, I think Justin Timberlake did something with it. I don't think it was tweet. I don't think it was tweet back then, but it was uh, something, he did something with it and it right. went, went viral. So Mad. is the, uh, so is that kind of the origin? Like, did you see that and go, oh, this needs to be the format of like dancers? I'd love to say there was some kind of like evil genius plan with it. It was, um, it was, I think it was more, 
Josh and Tom really wanted everything to be about the music mm -hmm. um, and they, and they not wanted them. and not them. And that kind of like stuck as a thing um, that we felt we pa really passionately about. Mm -hmm. And now like as it progressed and, it, and even in my own directing career, I just never find a similar connection in other ways of presenting it. Mm. Um, if you get the right cast, the right yeah. person, to the right song yeah mm -hmm. there's a mat like i'm always saying to people that i work with and when people try and like get me to mentor them i said 95 percent of it is getting the right people in the room and then fucking off <laughs> yeah homer simpson really slowly Just, back into the bush yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. no one move no one touch anything like um, your job is done and don't mess with it on the small stuff yeah mm. on the big stuff it's a bit more of a sure yes uh, interesting so yeah so then that was how many that was like 10 years ago don't mm -hmm. do that <laughs> It was a while ago. <laughs> Let's say that. A Let's say that. It was my birthday last little, week. Don't do that. A little while. Don't do that. It was a couple of years ago that you've been doing ago. jungle videos. But um, yeah, I mean, in 2013, it was a while ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah. And then I guess the production side has increased, but it's kind of still that idea of like just good music with dancers. Um, Every cycle we question it mm. and we have an existential chat. Should we do the right, same again? Right, and, right. and yeah. Yeah, because it's a hefty commitment. I mean, logistically, yes, but also artistically to go, yeah, we're going to do that again. Mm -hmm. Like that is a real call, cool, isn't it? Yeah. And there's always a feeling also like that you're not going to like push it and, and sort of um, yeah push it past what it's been already. Mm. You, you have. Definitely, yeah. I would, I would like, for, do you know what? Even as a um, egotistical perfectionist director, <laughs> Volcano is probably the first time that I've like, I was saying to a friend of mine, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm fucking old. And I've been doing it a long time, but that's like sick. Yeah, well, it's like it's as close to what I had on the page and what right, I wanted right, it right. to be as I've ever got. Mm -hmm. nice. And that is so much harder than than you would, would mm -hmm. imagine. Oh um, yeah, I bet. And like I was work, I, I was because I work really closely, obviously with Shay on this one. Yeah, but also Will and Mete are such a big part of it as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and they like there's a script, and that what you try and execute, and then. I think, yeah, a fun part of this process and, and talking to Will is like, is them seeing how like hard it is to get everything that you want yes. out of the thing. Mm -hmm. um, and there was, I mean, like, there's a really weird thing about making stuff like that where like, I didn't think it was good. <laughs> it was like three weeks of my life where I didn't think it was any good. At what because point? Of, is this in the planning? No, in post. Oh. Mm. <laughs> shot, like shot. Because they, like, you have such a high bar of what you want it to be. Um, sure. And then, yeah, you're like, this is like emotionally hit. Mm. Mm -hmm. and, and do you feel that also it's kind of like, even if, because I feel like sometimes this is the case with choreo or dance or something where you had something so specific in your mind that like, even if it's a little bit different, it might be equally as good, but you're almost disappointed by, mm. I didn't hit the mark. And you kind of, at some point you have to let go and go, okay, but it's still dope, even if yeah. it's not what I thought, you know? Yeah, for sure. And I think, I think, it, I think it goes even further. I think. I think the idea you have in your head is maybe more pretentious and wanky than like <laughs> actually what you get to. Because what you get right. to is like, it's a process. Like, I think that's why Shay has done so much for the thing because yeah. he's put so much of himself in it. Yeah. And there are parts of it where he's gone off on a tangent away from my script. Right. Mm. And in the room, in the casting room, and in the casting, in the rehearsal room, there's this, del there's this delicate balancing act of like, how much you try and because we did that in a week's rehearsal mm. and then shot all those videos in four days and there's a level to it where you can't break that much as it's happening mm. when you're trying right. to get when you're trying to achieve that much yeah and you've got you've got to, you kind of got to let tired, it flow it? yeah and it's about what you um what you let go and then what yeah you're there for mm -hmm. um, yeah yeah exactly but um i think will and mete's video within it is also really crucial because the duo one yeah yeah um, because that's kind of been building for a while yes. and it was really nice um, um, yeah that, sh that sort of Shay naturally kind of let them have that one right and they took out the responsibility and absolutely like <coughs> smashed it yeah and that's yeah, the like when I started to watch it and like really get into it um, it's a real moment in the film that mm -hmm. kind of underpins it all mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's really nicely done I think and um, so Obviously, Shay choreographed this whole thing. Um, but what, I mean, I'm not, maybe you know a bit as well, Tells, but like, 
what was uh because obviously the first one with terror wasn't choreographed necessarily it was just her dancing yeah and then at what point so the kendra one would would that have been the first one that so you goes to the plat- platoon was yeah. the first one with, with terror yeah and there is the roller skater one yes just looking, yeah. why the fuck can i not remember those boys names um that's gonna upset me so much high rollers thank go. god good <laughs> nice um, strong they're amazing um and then we did yeah we did kendra's one so that would have been the first time with like a choreographer. Involved. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Poor Kendra. We didn't know what the <laughs> we, we didn't know what we were doing, but she did great. Um, but in a way, like, so what's interesting about the jungle stuff, right, is like you don't capture dance, which is why I think we've like really enjoyed them as well. Is but it's like you don't capture dance in the way that a lot of other music videos um, capture dance, and or even like shows with real you know like even the some of the rihanna fenty stuff or Mm. where they've got like real choreographers on board but it's different in the sense that it almost feels like you have more of an appreciation for like letting the dance do its thing as opposed to like we need to cut we need to do this like there's often this thing of like it's almost like a cliche of like cutting to like feet moving fast Mm -hmm. because that's exciting you know and it's Mm -hmm. like when What's, for what's, us as dancers, I feel like we need, it's like, yeah, the feet might be doing the bulk of the work, but like, we want to see the whole picture and it's like, for, as, as artists, we're being pretentious in a way, but like, you need to see everything. Cause I, even if it's about my feet, it's about everything that I'm doing. And I think that's something, even when I saw the, the Kendra one, like a while ago now, um, busy earning, it's called for people. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was really like, I was like, oh, this is really different. Cause it's like, just like obviously there's as someone that works with like videography and stuff definitely not on that level but i understand like okay they've really made choices in the shots and why it's doing what it's doing it's way more subtle Mm. but it is a lot of like just let the dance do its thing and like Mm -hmm. unison like there's not a bunch of transitions a bunch of it's it's like it's the simplest thing in the world but if you don't cut you automatically demand of the viewer more attention than they would usually give it. Because yeah. the second you cut away, you, you're almost telling them that blink. there's moments, that you, there's moment <laughs> blink, there's yeah. moments you can miss. And it, and um, it's funny, I almost any music video that involves dance, I see the one shot they just should have fucking done in the whole video. Right. I'm right. like, why have you just cut away from that? Like, I feel like you've an said that before. I about feel like. Music videos. Yeah, or just having watched something and, you know, just like that could have and should have been. There'll be a amazing, there's been an amazing yeah. angle that I'm like, I'm pretty sure that take, if they've got a full take, is miles should have just been the one. Right, the video. right. But yeah, I mean, like, I think just chopping the shit out. It's like we see it with, I think we were talking about it with like um, maybe choreo videos or something, but like with Marvel fight scenes, mm-hmm. when it's like they just cut the, sh- the fight to shit. Mm. But like in that context, it says, well, to me, it says like these actors don't know how to fight Mm -hmm. (laughs) and then you look at like john wick and it's like those fight scenes are like one takes because he's very well trained Mm -hmm. so in a similar way whether or not it's like the audience are articulating it this way is when you're cutting loads it's almost it is like blink but it's also like almost like i'm trying to cover up something i'm trying to make you excited by over here we're over here we're over here rather than like Like they're not this we're making them look better they're not exactly yeah whereas like you know you watch john wick and you're like damn keanu reeves can right can do this shit you know and it's like that with the jungle stuff whereas like i watch these one takes and i'm like damn these guys can dance like i know it but it's nice to see it yeah Mm -hmm. for sure Mm -hmm. there's a really pretentious john luke goddard quote about um yeah truth being 25 something 25 seconds 25 frames a second and every cut is a lie oh i think i think think the viewer can feel that it's like the second you cut or you make it more manufactured they're like this isn't real but mm-hmm. i think with the jungle videos they kind of they get the muggles and they get everyone yeah because by the time they're halfway through it they're like this isn't this isn't sort of a show this this is a moment in time that happened yeah. and these people did this fucking incredible thing mm-hmm. and it happened and it happened mm-hmm. exactly exactly yeah. in the way that you're seeing it and, and if there was a mistake i'd see it so that, that means there was no mistakes there's always mm-hmm. mistakes well sure but <laughs> every single <laughs> but take you know it's every single like, take um, is like uh Someone hates me. Oh, well, right. Yeah. Yes. That's, yes, yes, that's yes. for sure. But it's like... If <laughs> and they're seen... usually in my close friendship group. <laughs> yeah. and I have to like do these phone calls and be like... So ah, sorry. I'm sorry I said I'm that. I'm sorry. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's not that take. I'm sorry I take. threw that at you. Um, but you know, have you seen the movie 1917? I did, yeah. yeah. So it's like, I know, of course, it's not one take. And of course, there was like, they had to redo certain things or whatever. But it's like, it doesn't feel like that. Just, It's almost like I can let myself believe that they did yeah. it in one take. It's incredible. And yeah. I, yeah, I feel like that would jungle where it's like i watch that video and i'm like 
it feels like, even if I know this isn't true, it feels like they walked in, put costume yeah. on, did one take yeah. and went next. Yeah. And it's like, of course someone messed up, but I don't, I'm almost like, I can just mm -hmm. pretend that no one ever messed up mm -hmm. the Oreo in there. Just, just gracing through life, like flawlessly, <laughs> like, you know, they're never late for trains. It's just this like world I can buy <laughs> yeah, into, you know, for sure. never, late for trains. <laughs> just never spill ketchup on their clothes. Um, so, okay. So when you did busy earning, like I said, I, the way I see it, and again, I'm not so, you know, um, what do you call that? I'm not like a expert, but it seems like that was the first time this format came. So was it like this? Well, originally the format was just like portraits of mm, people, right. Ash dance right, sort right. of thing. Um, and I think like, so originally, um, so originally those first videos I'm producing mm, and mm -hmm. then Josh was directing with this uh, friend of ours called Ollie Hadley mm -hmm. Perch. He's mm -hmm. gone on to be a very big fashion photographer. Oh, nice. nice. Um, so yeah, it, it, it kind of is a thing that kind of naturally evolved mm. um, and then really kind of, yeah, took shape in the second campaign when, when we went back to it. So that would be which, which is the first that you directed? The first one that I directed is probably... Oh, you're really testing my brain now. It would be the Nat one. Cherry. Trump? Cherry? No, Happy Man Director's Happy Cut, which Man. no, one ah, no okay. one's seen. But that's one of my favourite videos ever. Um, okay. I must have seen it. I've seen, yeah, I have. I've seen, I've seen them all. Seen um, them. Okay, yeah. Sick. Nice. How long? Is that a longer? Three. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that Sick. was your first. Wow. Well, yeah. That was my that, that was my first, um, and then yeah we did. Mm -hmm. I, I think I saw Busy Earning mm -hmm. ages ago when it came out, and I remember because I remember knowing the dancers in it. And then I don't think I I clocked back in until Cherry, mm -hmm. right? Because I remember seeing Cherry, and I remember you know, being like, like, Cherry's like in Naomi's in it. Well, yeah, exactly. And it's at Erdang, I Shout think. Naomi. But also, I loved the reverse thing. Um, this has been something I've been trying to steal for years, by the way. I'll, I'll just admit that to your face. Um, <laughs> and, and I'm going to keep trying. Um, no, but it's because uh, you know what it was? Actually, I did. I the did drop. No, the, well, the, you know, how, the far side video. Yeah, but I feel like there's something. Oh, no. Well, this one, because it's choreography. That's mm. what makes it hard. Right. OK. In my head. But what I think what if and I did try a video with um, Lorena where we did something similar. But what? I think you can tell me if I'm right on this. My uh, yeah, hypothesis was gone. reverse the track, choreograph mm. to the reverse track. I think so. Dance it and then reverse the whole That's thing. That's what I've mm. thought. Yeah. 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 Is that kind of how we... I'm fairly certain. Yeah, I was saying that like I was smart, but it's... I'm fairly certain. Well, uh, yeah, I think <laughs> I knew that from Drop because mm. that's what they did with Drop in terms of how they shot it. Far oh, side, really? Yeah. Yeah. The, oh, I um, thought that was just reverse footage. That oh no, because they wrapped to it, don't they? Yeah, exactly. <gasps> oh, I never thought about that. Yeah, didn't I've they never learn put, it? Yeah. yeah. So they learned. But I still, I still don't quite oh, have my more head uh, how Nat did that because in rehearsals I was that's one of those like mm. tap your belly mm -hmm. yeah. and I'm I'm useless in those yes. situations. Yeah. Oh well, that's wild. Okay, now I have way more appreciation for the drop video. I, I don't think I had clocked that, that they were rapping along to the song, so they must have wrapped it in reverse. That's wild. To my knowledge. I actually just yeah. shot a video like that the other day. Wow. Where the guy had to sing the thing in reverse. And that is a really a cool idea. Oh, yeah. Shay did it too, didn't he? Didn't Shay do a video here to drop? Oh, he did. He did, right? I've like yeah. David and Keron and stuff. Yeah, he did, he did, he did. I've not seen that. A few years back. Yeah. yeah, it did, like, it did bits at the time, if I remember. Yeah, right, I'll try really. and find it while we talk. But, um, yeah, he definitely did. You're going to be going back quite some time because that oh, boy has was... not stopped working. <laughs> Mate. <laughs> I, I might be able to find it on Google. Um, Race you. So, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Found it. Got it. Um, 2018. Oh, wow. Okay, fine. Yeah. Oh, on the Kenzo and Shay page. Um, yeah, he did it here. Yeah. Same format. Yeah, so they danced with it backwards and ba then played baby, it. Baby, baby, Dre, Dre. It's a clever... It's yeah. a clever little... Um, I'll throw it in your DMs, Charlie. That'd be amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, so now... So, right, you go... 
So who's been, has Kendra did the first one? Mm-hmm. Who choreographed Jungle? You said Jungle. Jungle. Oh cherry. my god, Jungle. Uh, cherry. Nat yeah. Zangi. Nat Zangi. I don't, do I know who that is? Don't think so. No. Okay. Uh, from here? Yeah. Well, North London. Sorry, Nat. Um, so she was in, she's the girl dancing in Happy Man, the director's cut. Oh, okay. Um, and then she did Cherry, Cassio. Mm-hmm. Heavy California. He- she's da- and she also did Heavy California. She's dancing in House in LA, which is another one. Yeah. Well, I mean, those were all, I did see, we started speaking about Jungle at that time because I think when Will was in it, I think you showed me a couple yeah, of Yeah, I think that was my uh, <clears throat> link to it. She's then, also the lady yeah. that's responsible for Will being part of Sick. Jungle as well. Yeah. Um, oh, that's dope then. And then Shay came in for which ones? The, the, all of these, basically. No. So mm-hmm. Nat did. Basically, at campaign two, album two, yeah, and then loving stereo album three was CC Nama and Nathaniel Williams. Ah, uh, sick, oh, yes, of, uh, war fame, yes, yes. Um, and so Shay, I mean, only just came for the last this jungle album. Shay, um, actually came on. We to good times and problems was choreographed uh, with Shay and Get a Funk Collective. Ah, um, and then we spoke to Shay about the full film. Right, that makes sense. So that one was done. You choreographed that, and then you said, "Right, this went well. We love this format. We want to extend it out. Will you choreograph the full?" Yes. Sick. That's really cool. So, and mainly, and like that was like working with the, working with the Ghetto Fun guys was incredible. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, like, yeah, different. Like Russia yeah. and Ruben, just yeah, oh, they're, they're amazing. Like, they're just a different, like, yeah, kind of kettle of fish altogether. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Shay's like his process is something that me and Josh have been looking for for a while in terms mm. of like. He's just so, like, precise with it. Um, mm. I sent him the script and, like, four days later, I had skeleton videos from Amsterdam with cool. 14 dancers in them. Holy. Which no one had agreed to pay for or done anything. I mean, wow. like, before even the paperwork's done, he just, I was looking at choreography. Wow. Um, so he's, uh, yeah, he's he's a very passionate and talented young Yeah, man. he's just got it at his fingertips, yeah. hasn't he, really? And you see him, like, when like in the rehearsal space when him and, like, Ori are just... Going for it because we kept fucking him over by like changing like Josh would I would because I wanted to I wanted the choreo to be so good I was like Josh would be like don't share the music and I've shared the music like three right, weeks earlier right. <laughs> I'm like cool story bro uh, the music has, has gone yeah, yeah to the point where like <laughs> on Candle Flame Lydia who's, who's who's like voices across the record she's amazing um she had like done a guide rap which I thought was a real rap. Right. Shay ah. thought it was a real rap. Shay choreographed <laughs> to the guide rap. It was fucking cool as fuck. Yeah. Nice. And Josh was like, what the hell? Like, I'm, <laughs> wait, I'm waiting for a verse from an actual LA rapper. <laughs> and you've got fucking Shay making like really, really Lyrical good bits. Like, on nice. like something Lydia, Lydia just riffing in the fucking studio. Oh, hysterical. that's so funny. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, that's dope even on Shay's I mean, part. He, and he's awesome, man. Like, uh, he was... Uh, he was working on some big project when I tried to confirm him for the dates. Yeah. And I actually moved, I moved the entire film based on his schedule. Sick, yeah. And, and just, that is how you know you have pulling power as an yes. artist. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes. But I mean, I also think that this is also, I mean, it's, it's definitely not true across the board, but I think as a choreographer, do you feel like you tend to have a bit more of that type of pulling power than the dancer? Because it's like, if you replace a dancer... It's it does create a wave, but if you create replace a choreographer, it can it, it changes the identity. The whole of the thing. thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it depends. I think it's fairly like I can think of like Janet Jackson's dancers, for instance, where the fans would notice a cast change, or Kylie in a certain era, like came with a certain gang, mm-hmm. and like in this case, you couldn't. Well, you could, but if you put other people where Will and Mete were for Volcano, sure. that's very different. But generally, yeah, you can mix and match the dancers, and it doesn't. Well, I got hell. For, I got hell for Will not being in Loving in Stereo. Oh, from the from, from the, the fans. fans. Oh, really? Where's Will West? Uh, that, Where's I mean, there Will you go. West? Where in all of this was it? Like, ah, those two are like that's a thing to follow. Well, you know what's funny? Um. Nat, me, me and Nat were texting the other day and it kept, like we were talking about how Where did it was it kind start? of it was like a happy accident yeah. I mean yeah um, it was one of those I mean 
it's such a difficult f- uh, thing for me to try and remember. I was go- like, I was going through all kinds of personal stuff during uh, that whole second album right. campaign to yes. the point where uh, it's a little bit of a blur Hazy. to me. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I know we made some crazy stuff, but yes. I couldn't tell you what was going on in right, Casio. Right, right. Casio was nuts. Nat was on tour with the band. And she was choreographing it in the bus coming back to London, wow. straight into bass to like do it. And yes. Oh my God. And then Will was such a massive part of that as well in like, and that's the thing about working with someone like Will. He has a natural effect on the choreography, even if he's like, um, not choreographing in inverted commas. Yes. Um, this time, like this time for once, I was actually able to like give him a little bit more extra money just based off the fact that him being in the room will create stuff that you will use. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I, I am like top of my list of priorities is to do something with him. Mm. Um, yeah. Cause I think he's, he's a fucking genius and yeah. uh, people gravitate towards him. Um, the whole loving and stereo thing was like one of those things where I think that's one of the most annoying things about it for me is that there was a wider idea a reason to exclude him. To mm. Right. Him. Yes. And yeah. When it didn't quite hit that mark, I was like, yeah, right. Just stop willing Wasn't it worth yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, just put him in. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, but I mean, also like like everything, it's it's a uh, it's a happy accident. But sure. I think they're so fucking happy to see him back. Yeah, and it's so incredible, and it's possibly the best jungle film ever. So it's kind of like, yeah, it feels right. Um, and yeah, he's just he's an incredible young man to work with, and a bit of like a bit of a legend on a personal level. He's he actually cares about people, and I can vouch for, for that. Yes, he's a. He's a good soul mm. and he's got a lot of blessings coming to him, which is. Yeah. Yes, he does. He does. Yeah. I mean, everyone in all of those jungle videos are fire. Like I fall in love. I fall in love with like almost all of them constantly. Mm. Um, Same. Um, <laughs> yeah. And like, <laughs> there's so many characters in the like Stefa- like Stefano, <laughs> Stefano. I would yeah. change teams for Stefano. Yeah. Like, he's like, he's just glorious. Yeah. Like, he's you know, so like, good in it. Too. He's so good. Like, he fucking absolutely nailed and he, in, in everything but the girl. Yeah. He mm. steals that video. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. everyone like, don't get me wrong. Everyone's amazing. And mm-hmm. sure. Honey and Ken are just brilliant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But like, he absolutely. What a relationship like, reveal. What a relationship reveal. I took so much fucking credit for that all the way through the process. The band were like, just got so much great chemistry. I was like, yeah, I know. You just got to talk to them. <laughs> nice. And then on set, I was like, they're, they're a couple. They're, they're very much in love. And I have done absolutely nothing. Nothing. Here. That's so funny. Did you cast them as a couple? Or I don't know the story really. Um, so we were looking like me and Miranda Chambers, who I, who I choreographed that for me. Um, oh, she we, did the... Okay. Everything but the girl. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nothing she but the girl. <laughs> nothing but yeah. the girl. She's everything but the girl. One oh, amazing. and two. And also her and Metty Lintori <laughs> choreographed a Peggy. video I did for Peggy Lee's Fever, mm. which we did in lockdown. Mm. So Universal, we missed a reaction. You Universal, may have seen Universal it. Universal doing this thing where they make uh, music videos for songs that never had music videos on their back catalogue. Got yeah. So we did ah. we did Fever, which is like one of my favourite videos ever. Oh wow. It's gorgeous, yeah. yeah. Maggie Claire's in that as well. Can I say that one of my favourite jungle videos is Che at the concert? Um yeah. Like I love that video so much. Peggy. That video is such a um You know the song. It's sure. a miracle that video. Yeah. Because, like, of course it is. Um, well no but this like is wild. We had like a junior yeah. we had a junior steady cam up. That was like his second gig. Um, like we we did all this health and safety stuff to make sure the steps were clear, mm-hmm. and then obviously within a half an hour of a Niles Rod- Rogers festival, the steps not were so completely clear. sticky and slippy. Right, right. Che's almost stacked it a couple of times. Um, yeah, it was a it was a miracle. Oh, I know what you're talking about. He starts at the top and makes his way like down backstage and on stage. Che, holy shit! Yeah, that was which I was the I, smile. I appear at the end being foul mouthed. Yes, that. Is a great video. Loved that Where did video. we watch? We didn't react to that, did we? No, but we may have watched it. No, when we did uh, Good Times, yeah. and Abe was like, I've not seen any. I was like, you need to see these ones uh, right Because I remember that concert one being like, oh. Yeah, it was yeah. sick. That's, Loved it. Like, that is a one take to the max. So that was our real concert. That was a real concert, yeah. Yeah, South Holy Bank. That's like uh, Queen Elizabeth, it looks like. Wow. Yeah. And so that was like, we have one take to get this thing. That was, yeah. <laughs> if that not, was, there's was no... Was it just the one? Well, was it just the one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, was, it was in the middle of a concert. We didn't yeah. actually technically have permission. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> we were retrospectively, South Bank charged us to another five racks, I think. Oh, wow. Like, Don't um, ask permission, ask forgiveness. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and get someone to pay the bill. Yeah, but, um, yeah. No, uh, we had done, like, most of the campaign. 
the second album campaign was a really weird one. Like, um, uh, we had showed, like the singles had been chosen and we kind of got to the end of what the record label thought the cycle was. Mm. And there was no video for Casio mm. and there was no video for smile. So it was like, they just goes like, we're done. Yeah, kind of. I mean, God bless them. They, 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 they gave us some money to make the, make them, but like there was, there was, they weren't planned to be made. Right. And then right. They got made and Casio got made quickly. But mm -hmm. smile was literally smile. Josh kind of paid Josh and Tom pay for themselves. We like thought about the night before mm -hmm. I was in a labyrinth rehearsal with Che. Mm -hmm. We went straight from that to the South bank and just that shot it. Really clever. Yeah. Cause it's like even the concept alone before I even saw, like, if I think about not having seen the visuals of it, just the concept alone is worth watching the video. Mm -hmm. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So then it's like, all right, if it makes nice visuals as well, then great. But it's almost like a, um, I don't want to say stunt because that like cheapens it, but like, it has it's that almost feel like to a, it, yeah. yeah, it's like a <sighs> concept doesn't quite do it either. But it's like, you know what I mean? It's like a, I know what you mean with this, stunt though. Yeah, it's like a stunt video where it's like, Half of the video is oh it looks cool, but half of the video is like this is a real Look video drama. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean, like a real thing. Yeah. Um, Gorgeous, I loved it. Yeah, that is really oh yeah, I didn't even think about that until you brought that up. That is a really good one. Um, yeah, so it's cr I mean you've done a lot of like really fucking cool videos, which I think, <laughs> which is really sick. Um, and I think obviously leading up to this album, because the thing is, it's like the 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 fact that it is like a full film and that it all links is almost like a cherry on top. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because like the other one that you said that you felt like it was a bit of a swing and a miss, even if it, you don't feel like if it was a swing and a miss in terms of the video linkage, mm -hmm. the videos are still amazing. Oh, so yeah, then incredible. it's like, fine. I mean, that, and, like, I mean no like, one's complaining. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, and that's the thing with like the whole process. And that's why, um, uh, yeah, whenever I'm talking to people about doing it, like that's one of the big things I say again mm -hmm. and again and again, is it like, it's what I always say to Josh when me and him, because jo like Josh from the band is like my best friend. And oh, we, we talk like 4 million hours a day about everything. And we dissect everything to like the nth degree about, mm -hmm. um, about the process of it and sort of how it's resonating. And we always go back to the fact that like the viewers that are seeing none of this. Do you mm. know what I mean? Like right. what yeah. I think is missing from loving in stereo, people have written in the YouTube comments being like, oh shit, Mete is stuck in her own head, and like they've mm. seen, they've seen it all. I think I've not like given it to them yeah, and, show, yeah. and walked them through it, and we've missed out cutscenes, and it's not like been put together the way I want to. But the like, the feeling of it's still in there for the fans. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, and that's uh, if sometimes they get you just have to shut your, shut yourself up and just uh, <laughs> yeah. move on to the next one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's like also it's really hard, I would say, to to consume as if you haven't as if you weren't the one that created it. Mm -hmm. Cause it's like, you can put yourself in those shoes and we will always do it. You know, you watch a piece back that you've mm -hmm. done and you're like, okay, what I do it with this pod is like, I listen back to certain sections. And I'm like, all right, imagine I don't know me. How do I sound? But mm -hmm. it's like, you can never do that. Like a mm hundred -hmm. yeah. percent. So there's always a part of you that's like, you have to just kind of let go and hope that the audience got what you, mm -hmm. and I think intention does carry more than yeah. we think, you know, if you meant that to come across, it's like, you're, you're so in it. You might be like, Oh, I missed it. But it's like, now nah, we got it. Yeah. Like, and it, yeah, and there's yeah. also the whole like the rehearsal footage versus the actual footage on a dancing level mm -hmm. is one of the biggest crimes of the universe. Because, Why? <laughs> because like there's always like if I showed you the rehearsal footage of Keep Moving, yeah, you you would want me to be fired as a director. Oh, because cause it's better <laughs> or worse? It's crazy good. Oh, and then we forced it into a location, and then, right? And right, in right. that, <gasps> and like. It's amazing. Things were wrong. lost. Keep moving is fantastic. Put out the footage. <laughs> <laughs> Put out the film, the well, volcano now, rehearsal footage. Now that we're, uh, <laughs> now we're feeding this social media beast, it'll probably get released. Oh yeah. That, Cause the thing and then is, we're like on that same front, there's yeah. incredible ones like going back to what you're talking about, about fil how you film stuff and mm. how you compose stuff. Like there's a rehearsal, the rehearsal footage of Nat doing happy man for her freestyle. Like, was very nearly released as a music video. Wow. Because Josh oh, was cool. like, that's so fucking emotional and great. Like, why do we have to go, why do I have to go and pay 20 racks? Yeah, 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 yeah. To, <laughs> to get, like, get home. one out. We've got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a magic in that and there's like, as we've got older, like, and that's kind of, it's weirdly how the idea for Problems and Good Times came on mm -hmm. doing the white box. Me and Josh were like, cool. 
we almost fucked it up last time by like trying to place it in a world right, and then you've got these right. walls and these things and they're just are these pillars in this prison where mm. like CC and the family have got this crazy choreo but now it has to like mm, go around the fucking pillow and like yeah, right. yeah. so right. we're like how the hell do we stop that happening mm. white box <laughs> right fair whatever fair happens fair. in the rehearsal room is going to happen in this white box and it's going to be immaculate mm. and we kind of extended that the location for Volcano is like it's not a white box but it it's mm -hmm. a big enough space where everything can just happen yes mm -hmm. and we can kind of place it around it and yeah. we purposely like other than candle flame and a few other ones didn't put too much in the way that that's like stuff. gonna fuck that up yeah because candle so, flame is the one with the big table yeah. yeah yeah because it's so hard and there's a whole nother level of like uh, gary kent who's our steady cam up so um, good he yes <laughs> He is worth mentioning. <laughs> he's literally the best, like, he's the best in the business. He's the um, lead dancer, essentially. He's also another person that you move shoots for. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. There's like two of them that I use again and again. There's another guy called Ben Ely who did uh, everything but uh, everything yeah. with the girl who's kind of like. He released the yeah. behind the scenes. That was yeah. sick. I think and, we reacted to that. And one. he's incredible. Yeah. And the reason I love both of them is that they are so like, they're so talented. They're so hardworking. And they don't have a fucking ego. Mm. Um, like you would imagine, like there are so many members of crew. Like when we're blocking, it took my my first AD, God bless him, a little while to figure this out on Volcano. But when we're blocking any a jungle video in, in the film, it's Shay and Gary who run the show for like mm. twenty minutes. So because Gary, like Shay, saying right, this is where the choreo goes, and Gary saying this is how I'm going to film, and they work it together. Because once those two have got it figured out, yeah, then it's like everything you and the well. nuance, and then you and the you and the detail. So and when that could be so problematic mm. if like Shay was a cunt about it, yes. and Gary was yes, a cunt yes, about yeah, it, yeah, like yeah. then could, you'd never get in that. You'd lose. You would lose videos. But it just shows that the people are the things that make these things mm -hmm. happen. No matter like the budget or the pe or the equipment or whatever, it's like the people are still the base of like mm -hmm. yeah. making this happen the only jobs of mine that have really gone left um is when you get bad crew and like when you get good crew you kind of hold on to them with your dear life and, yep. and gary's yeah he's he's a special talent and then, and that's the thing like when you're looking at volcano you are looking at like yeah without being too wanky about it like generational talents shade yep. Tuklin is a generational talent mm -hmm. will west is probably i would say i don't want to go too far but like He's an incredible... Better than Michael Jackson. <laughs> but like, he's an incredible, yeah, yeah. like, incredible yeah. talent. Yeah, he's Gary amazing. Kent is the best steady cam I've ever seen work ever. Um, there's a whole bunch of people. And then like, even in the cast, there's like, there's people within that cast that, there's not really, there's so many people in that cast that could carry the whole film on, oh. on their own. Mm -hmm. Oh really. yeah. Like, it's really like an all-star, mm -hmm. yeah, all-star cast. It's yeah. like, there's people in the background, like you said, that could be in yeah. that uh, title role, you know, and it's like, they're killing it. It's like, yeah. um, so uh, when in the process is the camera movement being figured out? Because obviously you've got the choreo. Um, but that's why Shay's a genius. Right. Because Shay's thinking about it. Like he's thinking. When he's choreographing yeah. it. Uh, so all those transition. Oh, I really want to see the rehearsal footage now. What, if, you, <laughs> if you follow Shay on TikTok, yeah. you'll, st you'll see she's starting know. to upload some of those things. Okay, um, okay. There's loads more BTS stuff coming on Jungle's socials mm. as well because um, we've got GoPro footage of all those process Sick. moments Sick. and we're going to do side by side. So did Shay ever kind of say, I've got the camera track figured out? Because sometimes like when we shoot like the way lower budget version of this, which is like dance uh, concept videos or whatever, like I might show up to a shoot and um, the dancers, like I already know, like sometimes I have to be like, mm -hmm. mm, that's not going to work. But they'll be like, I know what I want the camera here. Then halfway through the choreo, we're going to turn here. So you go there and then you go through and then finish there. Mm -hmm. Like did Shay kind of come and be like, right, I know where the camera should go. I mean, a lot of the time it's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's a Shay guide video mm -hmm. that he's done in Amsterdam. Like on with a phone or something. Yeah, and yeah. then we've redone it in London. And then there's like, yeah, there's a balance to how that fits into the space. Yeah. Um, but on the really good ones, um, like everything with the girl, that first one, that like that is Miranda's move from Dance Attic. Right. And then she's just placed it in the room. Wow. And my producer was laughing because I think I, I said about four or five things on that set. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Because it's like <laughs> Miranda's like got the comms. She's yeah. talking to Ben. Just, right. And right, I'm right. just worrying about like. Ben said he like didn't see the choreo until the day. Mm -hmm. That's wild. Oh, that was my, that was, that. That yeah. was my funniest one when uh, 
uh, yeah, when you were saying we had like two days yeah. rehearsal. Yeah, I was like, how much in. would you give for that? You're like two days. I was like, you I was like, me, I want to live like, in your oh, world. No, I want to live in your world. <laughs> when I'm agent, we get two <laughs> days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, but that is why, like, for Ben to just show off and be like, right, so what am yeah, I doing today? I remember you messaging mm-hmm. me like, we had half a day yeah, or yeah. whatever it was. Wild. Yeah. But also, like, the reason things like that are possible and, like, it has taken me a while to learn this. Yeah. And I was t- I was, uh, I was mentoring young Samuel Garcia. Do you know Samuel Garcia? Mm-hmm. Do I? So he's he's the, the host in the host. Volcano. Ah, yes. Give it up for Sister Williams. Yeah, like, yeah. him in... Um, girl called Pearl are amazing, oh, yeah, amazing Pearl, yeah. young choreographers. They're mm-hmm. high on my list to work with. Um, but I was mentoring him the other day. He was doing his own little dance film. Mm. And I was telling him like, yeah, the, like a lot of it is like, it's a weird balancing act between path of least resistance and like getting what you want. Mm-hmm. Because if you, <laughs> like if you, if you're too adamant about what you want and you don't look at what's around you in the real world and you're bashing your head against it. Yeah you're going to miss the thing, which is just right there. Yes. Which isn't Mm. quite what, Mm -hmm. isn't quite exactly how you saw it, Mm -hmm. but it's actually the thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's like, that's what the creativity is. It's like my idea that I created at home was this. And then someone goes, oh yeah, but I can't do it like that. And then the reaction in the moment to go, oh, I see a better path. Like that's sometimes the genius of it. We speak about that. Um, I think we've probably repeated it in like III related things, but like the amount of people I know that are creative geniuses, but because their ability to visualize is so great, Mm -hmm. so much greater than their resources, they never start when in fact a Mm -hmm. version on the way to that is probably the version, but because what they initially saw was, you know, stadium, all the bells and whistles, whatever, they just never do the thing. That is some artist's bars. It's another reason I love work. It's another reason I love working with dancers is because like, and I say this to labels all the time and it's a hard part of my process, but almost every idea I've ever had changes the second I do a casting yep. and I see seven amazing right, dancers right, yeah. do something to the music. Like yeah. Stefano's freestyle in the casting for everything but the girl, like changed the nature of that music video. Cool. Like Kwame, who didn't even get the gig, spoken <laughs> movement, change the nature of that mm, video right so like so when you see it it like creates and they're just insane and beasts and they do like and they give you so much and um yeah is and it a part of your creative process i mean i've got my assumptions but you're here so you can tell me um <laughs> the whole like the condensed time that you did i felt like loving in stereo was a covid consequence but might have been wrong but like so few rehearsals and pa- so many videos being shot on however many days. Like, is that a creative choice or a financial um, one? It's um, there's a couple of things going on there. Um, I'm in a I'm in a one man battle <laughs> against short form content. Mm. I think the tail is wagging the dog. I think we're all going to end up in a world of ice cream, good gang gang cowboy <laughs> licking fucking nonsense. And I think we <laughs> will all want to kill ourselves. So my reaction to that is to just go ham the other way. Mm-hmm. Um, right. The next jungle film might be four hours long. That's part of a Here three disc it. thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's more about like kind of like learning from that second album process. Like God, like if there hadn't been a fucking video for Casio, and the fans had had no access point to that. Like, where would we be? Right. So I've been banging on at Josh and Tom, and like, I got to shout out Josh and Tom because um, they believe in their art mm. and they go to bat for me in terms mm-hmm. of like what I'm asking for and what mm. I'm telling them is the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. And like, they spent a, a fucking fortune um, executing it. But I think it's really important to like, you never know which songs the fans are going to gravitate towards. So like, yeah, it's. The process is quick because I'm like, we are making a video for every song on this album. Mm. And how do we actually do that? And how do we execute that? And then as a byproduct of that, because I came up in production from the ground up, I've spent a lot of time trimming the fat and there's a lot of nonsense that goes on. And if you do have the right planning and the right crew, you can get a lot done. And if we're going to spend a hundred racks, why not spend 140 and do everything? Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And the pressure gets put on these um these poor choreographers who end up hating me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they hate you. I'm, I can't imagine hate the, an emotion in the no, mix there. but um Just gratitude. Yeah, it's a uh, yeah, it, it's it's a process. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a process, and sometimes like 
you can feel really rushed and then sometimes you got oodles and oodles of time do you, do you feel like then with you know doing obviously working with dance a lot and not being a dancer or, uh, by in origin do you feel not like being able to dance <laughs> yeah ah, fucking sorry. okay right i didn't know if you had a few moves <laughs> in the in the tank um but do you feel like w- let's say when you're on set are you because obviously, you know, I'm imagining like seeing something like Shay's choreography or like some of these dancers, like I'm amazed by them and I've seen dance nonstop for mm-hmm. 15 years. So not having really seen that much dance that often, are you kind of, do you find it hard to be like, okay, that looks really impressive, but I have to find the flaws in it or find things that need to be done better. Or are you just able to go, I trust Shay enough that he'll tell me if it looks or if it's messy or that type of thing. Yeah. I mean, it's an interesting one. Like on like, on that process on Volcano, by the time we got into the room, like where we're actually filming, I trust Shay to like okay. beyond the point of of, of no return on that because yeah. he's he's got such a high level. Um, on smaller jobs, when I'm less sure of it, it, that's kind of where I would like maybe change the idea a little bit if I if I if I if I saw that happening. Mm. Um, like if you watch the take, and then you're like, I don't know. To me, it looks like they're messed up. But like the the choreographer's like. Oh, that was a good take, and you're like, yeah. The, chore- like the choreographers I work with tend to be so anal. <laughs> okay, that, like, so they're ahead of you they're, in that. They're they're hating perfect takes. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, so it's more that <laughs> way around that that you're like, that looks great, and they're like, no, we're doing it yeah. again, and you're like, no, oh, okay. And like, God bless him. Like, um, uh, the sort of reason I love Shay is that he's like he watches everything. Mm. So if I send him nine takes of Back on Seventy Four, like he watches them, checks it, and we mm. change the Back on Seventy Four take. Oh, very late on really yeah because it was we would we were deciding between two and with like one takes we're like that when there's so much emotion involved and there's mm. so much feeling like mm-hmm. there's always a mistake in the videos sure. like pe- people say casio is perfect i won't point it out but there's a <laughs> it's a huge error in casio oh. but because people love it no one sees it right what was the what did it come down to between the two takes if you can say without giving too much away like um what it was, was basically the decision? like um, there are there are certain moments of like within a one take. There's always things that you're gonna like. There's like really cool moments. Mm-hmm. Um, like me and Miranda when we work together, I always have this where I'm like gravitating towards like a cool moment, and she's like, "Yeah, but that like the dancing takes much better." Um, so there's small things in Back of Only Four, like the t- the take that almost tricked us. Like Stefano comes like crazy sliding in. So from weirdly from the beginning of the process, I was like, it's it's just a final slide take. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then eventually Shay's like, it was also really complicated for us because we had the Wii transfer version uh, with the interchangeable art. Yes. Um, and originally we were like, we were going to have a separate film version. They've got the interchangeable art one and we're going to have a separate film one. Mm-hmm. And then eventually we came to the realization that the Wii transfer one was just the one. The one. Right. Um, right. And now looking back at it, it's very fucking obvious um, well, it feels obvious mm-hmm. how much of that is like sure, audience fucking yeah. rendition. Mm-hmm. It's just like, mm-hmm. oh, they love it, so it must be the one. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's why you got to have people like Shay that like are gonna fucking text you at two a.m. when they're doing something else, being like, I think it's the way transfer version, right. right? And then I have to go back and have a whole conversation and, and like mm-hmm. reopen things. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's nice to have people in the process that care mm-hmm. as much as you do. Yeah. Because yeah. there's so much going on. Yeah, for sure. And I guess it's also like the the balance between, like you said, like being super anal or being like able to to look and say, okay, there's a little mistake in the back of here, but the take is so magic. Well, that's like that. Let's th- let it go. Yeah, I mean, that's when like that's when if you're like a choreographer or a dancer or anyone any creator, like I think Ashe will almost. In, I think he did actually the other day. I think he'll almost inevitably start directing himself. Right. And so I think he has in his brain that there's like. A balance and yeah like, yeah it's like cool if there's like the most crazy clean like dancing take if it doesn't make us feel anything mm-hmm. like because that's, that's a, a like, i mean yeah. there's a lot of uh like really clean choreo that gets done that doesn't move me in no, any way and it's I would, perfect but and i would never work with those choreographers and like, yeah it doesn't it doesn't do what i need it to do mm-hmm. from like a, an emotional point of view mm-hmm. um so there's that balance that has to be struck as well. Right, right, right. So, okay, I just thought of this actually, but maybe we should uh, take a step back for those of the audience at home. Mm-hmm. Can you just break down, because we've said it, you've said it a couple of times and I just realised that maybe not everyone knows the roles of these 
things that you're talking about, mm-hmm. right? Obviously, I think I would hope perhaps your listeners know what a choreographer does <laughs> and what a dancer <laughs> does. But in terms of, because you said you started as a producer and now obviously you're a director. So what can you, for someone that didn't know, can you break down what a producer would, what their role would be on a music video and what a director actually does? Like I actually started as a runner. Okay. So like making cups of tea. Yeah, so runner is... <laughs> Does assistant, everything, basically. does everything. Yeah. Yeah. Throwing release forms at people. Yes, <laughs> yeah, as exactly. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, and then I was an uh, in-house editor. Okay. So just like chopping stuff up in-house. Yep. Um, as part of a team, I guess. Like I, so I used to work for a production company doing <clears throat> mm-hmm. big commercials. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I kind of got into writing treatments as part of that. Right. Um, treatments are like the idea for yep. a commercial or a video. So I guess, yeah, also this is all really useful, I think, for people to know. So a treatment... If I correct me or add on to this, if if I don't give a complete description, but yeah. a treatment is like yes, the idea for the thing, but you'll create like a document that will show like visuals and like different like write ups and perfect. That's okay. a treatment. I wonder if we can. Oh, oh not that one. <laughs> <laughs> not that one, but yeah. Yeah, I wonder if we can maybe. I'll, I'll put you know something on the screen, or I'll figure out what. We do you know? Can what do I do. I'll send you an old one. Okay, that'd be great. And but yeah, it's can, like everyone, a, everyone can rip off my template. Perfect. <laughs> so I think the thing that I think about treatments is it's also supposed to give you not only like written, like it's going to be a really visually striking film, like the treatment itself needs to be visually striking mm-hmm. to, to get that idea across. I tend to or, do a lot of mood films as well. Um, nice. To like set things to other things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, um, so this is all the, before the video gets made or even greenlit sometimes, right? It's like, I the mean, things I've, ri- that, I've written six treatments this week. Okay, cool. And like, and I'll probably get two of them. Yeah, I think that process is really interesting because I think that's something that, I, well, so going back because we haven't spoke before, but <laughs> that like I uh, did a, a taught a module at the University of East London called uh, Screen Dance or Dance mm-hmm. Screen. And we had like storyboards and um, treatments and something else in there. And I was like, I think it's something that even on a very low level we need to do, you know, it could just be me and Tally just mm-hmm. shooting a little video. Mm-hmm. It's like, even if we're not going to do a full treatment, but like just, you know, we, some people do it where they do like Pinterest boards or something, but like a little treatment with some write up and some visuals might be nice for us to get on the same page. For sure. mm-hmm. And I think it's, it's really something that I think people think of like, Oh, it's something I'll do when it's a big budget. Mm-hmm. Product. And it's like, it's the concept of it isn't a big budget thing. No, it's no, just no. a, let's get on the same page. It's, but also, it's just yeah. done in more corporate kind of work you know and in a similar way to the casting process it's another part of the process where your idea will probably change as you start because like you start dipping into image galleries and, mm. and referencing old films and then suddenly you see an image and you're like oh shit right. it needs yeah. to right. be that yeah, yeah, do you yeah. mean and like mm-hmm. it, it can always morph into something else mm. so yeah so you did the treatment right and then you said you moved up from and then I mistakenly started producing <laughs> okay and can you break down what a producer does <laughs> I think I'd does? love to be well I do it for myself but yeah you hated it? I'm just not very good with money. And like, I would just, I, I produced because I was working at a production company. Um, uh, I met a, a, I met a friend of mine, Harry, who's now no longer with us. And he introduced me to Koji Radical's music mm-hmm. when it was really early on. And I, and I was like, this, like, I'm in a position where I had kind of set Jungle off, Jungle World touring. And I was kind of in a position where I was still working at the production company. And I was like, I can like use all these connections to make this Koja shit yeah. like bigger. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just kind of, pre- I produced so that it would happen. Mm. Um, and then like the Koja stuff went crazy. The reaction was just nuts and it kind of snowballed and I started a production company. Mate. Nice. So what was, let's say when you were doing the producing early on, like what is that Produ- job? Uh, producing is like a good producer. So my producer now, Matt Craig, God bless his soul. Um, runs everything so uh i'll write a treatment for a job he will do a budget of what he thinks it's going to cost he will then negotiate with the label Mm -hmm. to try and get that money out of them once that money comes in he'll then me and him will discuss crew he'll book all the crew basically just logistics everything and you were doing that before you were directing i was doing what, while in the throes of a nervous breakdown, I was doing that. I was producing. <laughs> As all good producers are. I was producing, directing, and editing. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Fair. Wow. So were you pro- directing on the projects you were also producing? Eventually, yeah. Right. Which was a big Similar big to mistake. teaching on the programs that you yeah. produce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so then 
you moved into just directing after that, I'm assuming. Yeah. And so this is, I guess, the important thing because we all know directors like in movies and stuff. I think it's similar with producers mm. like we hear the name, but like, if forgive me if, if anyone at home thinks this is a dumb question, but like, what do, is a director doing? Like, besides standing there going action, like, what is it that your day to day responsibilities are? What are you in charge of? What are you not in charge of? Give us the like beginner's guide to being a director. It's difficult. I mean, for starters, like, directors don't usually call action. That's your oh. first AD. <laughs> it's my first mistake. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> it's a difficult one. I mean, it depends on like what kind of director you are. Okay. I'm usually directing for my own production company. Okay. Which I own and run. Right. So then I have like a weird like higher up Laid. level within it. Right, right, I mean? right. Like right. I'm more involved in like I would deep, along with Matt, like deeply involved in the logistics and the financial stuff. So you don't really have like a boss that brought you in. Like you're the boss that brought you in. Basically. <laughs> right. Um but I mean most of most of it is about just executing your idea. Okay. Um there's lots of like there's lots of ways people do it badly. Um, which is like to like like I said earlier to be to try and control things that you don't necessarily need to control. Most of it is just like guiding people to make the thing that you want them to make in the way mm -hmm. that you want them to do it. And a lot of that is to do like the more heavy handed you are, um, the worse that can go. Yeah. But technically, from like a technical point of view, you're in charge of everything. Everything other than the logistics and like the money of it, which sure. is the producer. So I guess so. Let's say on a on a film set or what, no, let's say on the like the jungle video. You said it's Gary, right? The camera operator. Yeah. So you've got Gary, and then you've got Shay, who you've kind of put into place there, mm -hmm. knowing that Gary's dope and knowing that Shay's dope. And then technically, Gary's the one in charge of operating the camera. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shay's the one in charge of operating the dancers, and but you're in charge of like almost. It gets more complicated. It gets more complicated because right. as a director of photography. Right. Who's technically in charge of Gary mm -hmm. as well. So you're like telling the director of photography, these are the types of ideas that I want and this is how I want to do it. And they're yeah. saying, well, what about we use this? What about we do this? Yeah. And passing that down to Gary. And this, is where, like, and this is where like, if you have bad, yeah. if you have bad people who are more interested in the ego of it yeah. than the process, then every time I try to have a conversation with Gary or Shay, every, well, every time I try to have a conversation with Gary, I would then have to have a conversation with Tasha, the DOP, who would then, if she was bad at her job, would have this weird ego about it. Well, no, no, I'll tell them. Whereas what's actually going on on Volcano, which worked kind of beautifully, was like everyone kind of respected that I, we, me and Josh had anointed like Shay and Gary yeah. as like they're yeah. doing this holy process. Right, yeah. Yeah. And right. Tash is kind of watching it all happening and just doing her job around it. Mm -hmm. So instead of like getting in and being like, like shit DOPs or people who didn't understand that process would be like, mm, like, but guys, can you not move the whole fucking routine to this way? Yeah, yeah, Because right. so, it'd be better for lighting. Mm. And like... It's like if Gary and Shay says it, do it. <laughs> yeah, and like she's amazing. So she just kind of like set it up in a way that where she just responded to what she was seeing. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, because it's like, I guess in... This is something that, you know, knowing more about film and and the somewhat of the these type of processes, like I could start recognising like what a DOP or a cinematographer does, mm. right? So then it's like, even with music videos, there's certain ones that I'm like, sometimes I get, I'm like, I wonder if that was by the same cinematographer mm. as the other one. And then I'll look it up and then it's the same or whatever. Or even like um, knowing that, like knowing who Roger Deakins mm. is now. Mm. like, And I'm like, if I know that he's a cinematographer on a movie, I'm like, I will yeah. like this movie. And it's like, then you, you start to see like, I know what I'll like about it. Because like then you see the visuals and the way that he shot it, and the story can be all completely mm. different stories, but his visuals are going to be beautiful. Yeah. And it's like I think then you understand how people because that's what I didn't understand is like well if the director says shoot it this way, then what is Roger Deakins' job? Or if he mm. comes in and says I'm going to shoot it this way, what's well, the director's I mean, job? Like I mean this is where like it gets complicated. Yeah, but like there are different kind of directors mm. like. I like to use people that I trust mm -hmm. their vision so you in can their just world. Like I don't talk to Tasha about lenses. Like yeah. I might, we might have a conversation about the size of a frame. So what, yeah, would you, like, you talk about size of frame and maybe like how you want it to feel or what would yeah. be the... Oh no, like the overall tone of the piece for sure. sure. But um, like in the nuance of it, I tend to like not want to like... Yeah, get like she'll the, get that effect. It's like me like jumping into Shay and being like, I don't think they should be doing it at that sort of point. Mm. Like, mm. like... I might have something to say about it, but 
at a certain level, it's like. So you might say to is. Shay, like, I feel like this part needs to be more like explosive or this part needs to travel, but not like, oh, it shouldn't be that step. It should be this mm. step. Is that kind I of mean, a difference? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then like Josh also, because Josh is like got such a deep emotional connection with the music and he's mm. co-directing with me, will also be like just guiding people to moments in the music that he feels like right. need to go. Can somewhere. you highlight this part yeah. or can you? Yeah. Right. With someone like Shay, that's like two or three moments in a, in a whole Sure, album. right. And there is a really delicate balance to like, you know, but being what you said about being heavy handed and like, really forcing the process in different directions in like or just you, knowing when to when you're tap. doing when you're doing 13 videos in four days and you have a week to rehearse if you lose that room or you lose like shay's flow. enthusiasm yeah. and flows through it mm. that's always my thing is like you've set this thing in motion like keep it afloat keep it afloat and like um yeah i think i think maybe on loving and stereo if i'm like cold like cold hard truth as myself i'm i was trying to like do too much of this mm. right um and i walked away from that process being like if i'd pulled a sickie and like left cc and nathaniel up the hill on their own would it maybe like no obviously like that's just me being hypercritical of myself <laughs> yeah, 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 but when mm -hmm. you're too like hand on the pump you have this feeling of like ah like right just like take your foot off a little bit and there are moments you have to step in mm. and just say certain things but mm -hmm. it's like it's precision yeah. it's like cooking like you yeah do, don't do just do it, pour salt in and, just, and if you do it <laughs> yeah. for too long and you yeah. get too in it and like yes and that's another thing as well about it like me and josh have been doing this for a decade like longer do you mm -hmm. know what i mean like we're mm -hmm. in it yeah like it matters mm -hmm. to us like sure on a fundamental like level but that's, and that's not always a great thing yeah but it's and it's also easier though when you feel like you have someone like shay who cares mm -hmm. so you can go oh, okay i can relax because he cares as much as i do yeah. but if you're someone like oh yeah you want me to do five six seven eight yeah cool mate. i literally right. the second he sent me that skeleton without yeah. anyone having asked for it mm -hmm. like it was like a pasta fucking kidney stone. I yeah. like, like, I've got someone in the trenches with me who's going right. to like it's like pick up it, a shovel and dig. In a way, it's like, it's not, but it's like choosing a babysitter. Uh -huh. It's like, I have this kid. This is my first babysitter. I want to go to the cinema. Sure. I need to be able to trust you're not going to yeah. kill my baby. Mm -hmm. For sure. Like, mm -hmm. For sure. <laughs> but I feel like this, uh, what we're saying about that, the facilitating touch mm -hmm. is a very you teaching thing. Like what he's describing about the directing is like yeah. how I feel like you No, I was thinking of that because I've worked with in theatre mm. a direct well two very uh, uh directors at the opposite end of the spectrum where one was very just like in everyone's department <laughs> and another who was a bit more not hands off but like trusted the people that mm -hmm. he'd employed. And I feel like good creatives will feel that heavy hand and not in protection of their art, but there is a risk that they will contract and like almost like take their good yeah. bits and just 100%. be like, if you're not going to leave me <laughs> yeah. to do my job. Yeah. Um, Nobody really likes to be micromanaged in every job anyway. Especially by people that like, people know straight away that you don't have like a dialogue in it. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Like if, yes. I start, if I start talking to Tasha about lenses and what I think about <laughs> coated fucking things and uncoated things and like, it's a whole world. Yeah. She like like I hope he never in. watches it, but watches this, probably not, but a director that I worked with, like started choreographing mm. a scene and all the dancers, all the cast members were like watching me <laughs> let it happen. Yeah. <laughs> And it's like, I am not, we'll talk about it after, but like, if he needs to like, get this out, get this out, yeah, <laughs> go for it. Like he will, there's more, he'll expose himself oh, through, yeah. through being allowed to do it in front of a room full of people than me throwing my toys out of the pram because yeah. he's in my department. Um, yeah. So yeah, that happened. But watching someone without the know-how <laughs> just... Like it takes a lot of either ignorance or just like real vim to sit in front of a choreographer oh, yeah. and choreograph well, a scene. It's also like, yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> but also it's like you, kind of what you're saying with Tasha, but it's like you hire 
the people you hire for a reason. And yes. that's the whole point is like, I didn't hire you just because I had to fill a role or you're just someone off the street. Mm-hmm. I hired you, hopefully, because you know more but than I imagine me the about heavy, that thing. The heavy handed thing mm-hmm. happens or happened initially out of necessity. In You mean early on in someone's career? Yeah, I mm-hmm. imagine like you had to get involved because it wasn't going. So I, ima- I can understand why a process would start like that, but you would hope you'd recognize like, oh God, no, these, these people know what they're do it yeah um, and like i'm talking from like years of experience mm. um and it's taken a while to sure get to, to get that, to that, to that level of yeah mm-hmm. and to, to be at the because mm. also it's like i think there's a there's a parallel right where it's like yes you've grown over the years and learned to let go but also through your career you're now working with much better professionals mm-hmm. yeah you know it's like there's a difference between letting go when it's shay mm. and letting go when it's like some yeah. young choreographer and they're like it's their but first weirdly, time. But weirdly, like, if you want the first time thing to be good as well, you should probably let go as well. Fair, yeah. Fair. Yeah. Yeah. No, th- it is a real yeah. trust. Not it is, It's a, it's an internal thing as much as it is a trusting in yeah. the team. Because I, specifically with the artist program, we just spoke about it today. It's like, because it's about those choreographers and they're like expanding their creative process as much as I'm in the space I do have to leave them to do their thing and like as a facilitator it's like how hands-off can you be but still feel like you're Mm -hmm. there and you know not moving the pieces but that I am facilitating and I'm not just like they're chilling and yeah watching and that is like I wouldn't have been able to do this exact program in the exact way that it's set up mm-hmm. 10 years ago mm-hmm. there'd well, be a schedule because i said yeah. to them this is the third edition so i know what happens here yeah so i could in the third edition go right so day one's that like day one to ten like this is how it goes mm. and like at this point in the program that happens so i'll need to do that and make sure that i leave room for like that component of the intensive but it's but you don't do that no, I plan the first <sighs> half of the first day. Mm. But you're just saying first half of the first gets... day, and then the first day that the dancers join. Yeah, it's, I feel like that. But you still manage of... to get through all the stuff you need to. Well, naturally. because of it's like okay, you've got some time to play around with some ideas, and let's keep the play up until like the end, mm-hmm. and not the whole. You know, there's a sharing in a few days, yeah, so yeah. like panic, panic. If I like that's a lesson I have to do that too like I have to play and I have to be part of the playtime mm. and responsive to the play and not you guys play but I've got quite a rigid schedule <laughs> play, but in only mind, when actually. I say go and when I say stop yeah, yeah, yeah so and it's also a challenge for me as a teacher to like stay open to what's happening yes and not you're not getting as much out of this as, out of this as I think you should be so all hands on deck to make sure you come away with what I think you should come away mm. with um and like w- let it be what it is kind of thing yeah and <clears throat> like people always go away with loads but what that what loads is to them isn't necessarily what loads is to like that's not for me to dictate True, it's almost like therapy in a way that is like the therapist isn't like now tell me this and then tell me this and then tell me this, this, this. And then, and then, but how do you, like, they're just kind of like, hmm, interesting. Like, tell me more. Or like they, like they maybe say like three or four yeah, things. So but- we've decided I'm a professional <laughs> clocker. A professional Clock- clocker. Like oh, just nice. clock, like I just watching the room and then, cause we had DJ, um, Zoo Nation's musical director, yeah. like lead a session today. And okay. I was just watching people just like might blown away by it. And I just said to one of the, um, artists, at lunch, I was like, "You were, you went places in that session." She's like, "Can you just like leave me to just <laughs> have the time I'm having?" Yeah, yeah, and I was yeah. like, "I'm literally sat on the outskirts of the room, watching it. But I'm that's going the to clock between, some things." But like, that's the difference I think between being actively hands off, like you're sorry, hands off but still active, as opposed to just chilling and sitting on the side. You're not like taking a break while he. No, you're, no, you're being no. active and you're invested yeah. so it's like you're still there to make those little adjustments if need be or to like if you feel like someone's not un- i think you're quite good at this i'm trying to think of a context where you've done it with me but just as a friend maybe where it's like Thanks, man. we'll be talking <laughs> and <Cute>. then <laughs> no but you'll be the person that like somebody's explaining something to the group and i'm kind of like oh yeah but 
this is like a made up context, mm-hmm. but I can imagine you doing this. I'm like, oh yeah. And you'll go, you didn't understand that, did you? And mm-hmm. I'm like, no, I didn't, but I didn't want to say it. Or mm-hmm. like, I didn't feel like I wanted to interrupt, but you'll interrupt because you've noticed that I didn't um, understand it and highlight it so that I can understand. You that know what I mean? That is something that I would do. Right. <laughs> yeah, or just... You, for better or worse. Yeah, exactly. You, you use those powers <laughs> for evil yourself. sometimes, yeah. It's like when you were giving your show rundown, I was like, You're quite you were am- getting really amplified there. <laughs> but you know what's so... I think actually I realised what you're messaged real me back. about it. He was like, why are you killing his excitement? I was like, because I knew how much alcohol he'd had yes. and oh. I was worried he was spiralling. But you know... <laughs> <laughs> but you know i was I, I stood up after that pod and i was like Whoa. but you know what is even funnier is like the bit now watching it back i realized <clears throat> but like the bit that you were talking about me getting amplified isn't in the real like now that i look because i remember i was doing a little dance i was like and then he's like this and then he does this and then if you go back that's what you were saying i was amplified but so she's not that bad um i'm not that bad please actually yes any real that you see i <laughs> really implore you to go and watch the entire topic that's being discussed because i ride quite a wave (laughs) how do you mean (laughs) and there'll be smoke there that i mean but like in the wider context of the topic discussed i would like to say the overarching tone is constructive we, we should do a poll <laughs> because all the guests that I've been on with Tally can do, like vouch for it yeah. or not. Do you agree with what she just said? Like, can we make that the real? Yes. <laughs> Great. Like we can hopefully all agree that I want our community and industry to win despite the seasonal smoky bin. <laughs> the seasonal smoke. That sounds like a mixtape. Yeah. I want seasonal my agency smoke. to be called Warranted Smoke. Warranted Smoke. That's because good. I spoke about choreographers becoming uh agents and like Mm. that not making that much sense to me and i was like that's giving unqualified greed and that could be the name of their agency yes unqualified greed Greed, and mine Mm. could be called warranted smoke i like i think it bangs actually anyway copyright the the name now now (laughs) get at it um (laughs) just to quickly go back to the um the topic at hand so sorry um, that's what the podcast should be called but yeah (laughs) With the meddlers and the people that really like to get in yes. and break stuff and be heavy handed yeah. with yeah. it, I always find that there's like there's different types of people in the process mm. and like like and it maybe I was like this when I was younger, but I think you get to a stage, or at least I've got to a stage where I'm not looking for anything for myself in the process. If that makes sense? Mm-hmm. Um, like I don't need I don't need to walk on set and like feed my ego. Sure. So there's a like that like, is definitely a consideration. Like, the, like my producer was shocked by like the everything but the girl video because I was so like, like seemingly off, but like I don't need to need the grandstand to like tick that box. Mm. And a lot of the times, those kind of people are not really like really there for like making the thing as good as it can be. 100%. And then there's like there's some like people that you work with that are just like I don't know if you know Sasha Sasha Hadid Shadid yeah, yeah Shadid Shadid Hadid lol um, Sasha's Hadid. Sasha's Hadid. Yeah, like, Hadid that belongs to him. Sasha. I worked with him the other day and we did a video which is our... I'm very excited to see it. Next week. I'll show Not it a jungle you. video? No. Oh. A different video. I was um, like, you're back to jungle I'm videos like, already? No. no God, not just <laughs> I was like, let it, <laughs> let let it, it have a minute. Take a second. <laughs> yeah. Thank God they've gone on a world tour. Yeah, yeah. Some happy days. Um, but no, I did a video with him and an amazing dancer called Salome Presak, who's just I incredible. Know that name. Same, yeah. Know the name. Yeah, she's. I think she's just been at Wayne McGregor. Um, mm. um, from the time Sasha walked in the rehearsal room, for the entire duration of the rehearsal, he did not talk about any fucking thing other than what we were doing. Right. Mm. There was no talk of like the weather. Yeah. Or right. He just done the jungle he's just film. Just in the process. He's just in the process in a way that's like borderline, like obsessive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But right. like is so beautiful to be a part of because mm-hmm. it's like, okay, like you're going to do something like nuts. And he like, he is wild. He's made like, yeah, it's, and it's, it's, yeah, that's probably my favorite video of the year, Ooh. which wow. is a wild thing to say out loud. And it's probably because I like the small shit and like, sure. um, there's a beauty to them that like, yes, you don't get in the big stuff, but that is like, it's nuts. I feel a reaction coming on. <laughs> yeah. Think, like, when you, when you see that video, like, he gave me 17, like, I think we did like, no, I think we did 13 takes. Wow. I could have used 
any of his takes. Wow. Nice. Like, it's just about which is And the, the right last one. one, like, we used is, like, the last take of the day where Salome just went absolutely fucking ham. And by that point, like, Sasha had a fucking clothing pin in his thigh because her trousers had ripped because wow. he'd gone fucking ham 12 times already. And, like, and that's another thing as well, like, in the process, like, when we when I showed him the take, he was like, "Bro, you're using the last take, like you're, like you're killing me, bro." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like, yeah, he just like he said one, he said this one little small thing, like, but then he said like, "I trust your vision," and then he left it alone for four days. And he was like, "I love it. It's my like, it's mm. beautiful." And yeah, he's a, he's a real he's one I would like. There are people you meet along the way that you just want to work with again yep. and again and again. Mm -hmm. Spoken movement, like, yep. before I leave this planet, I will make a film with spoken music. Mm. I have to make a film with Will West and like Sasha. Um, there are some other characters as well. Like there's a kid called Jai Jai Bato. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We love Jai. Oh, nuts. Yeah, yeah. He's nuts. Dope. Like he did a jungle casting tape for me, which like ah. I still don't know how he didn't get the gig. <laughs> um, but he's yeah, yeah, he's great. Just yeah, different yeah. different energies. Where did mm -hmm. we go with him? Toronto. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the thing that him and uh, him and Will West did together with a mobile phone, and that's better than most people's fucking music videos. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've seen that. <laughs> Oh, uh, like a self-tape thing. Yeah, they were oh. just dicking around with the mobile oh, phone, right. like flicking it in the air and then landing and just... Yes, and, yeah. and I was no, like, they are that is more creative same. than most yep. music, music videos. Yeah, so. they are. Yeah, yeah. the same ilk, those two. Very special. Yeah, I feel like people like that, like also Dylan I put in that camp, mm -hmm. like just, yeah, just dope people. Um, I was really, good, really gassed to have Dylan and, and David on this one. Cause yeah, yeah, me yeah too. David as well. Another um, me too. <clears throat> there's these reoccurring lists that like... Mm -hmm. Getting through choreographers like Miranda always bollocking me, being like, "You're hiring the wrong dancers." <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> I'm doing my yeah. best. Um, well, uh, hopefully, you'll be around for decades more, and you'll get through them. Yeah, all and then some for sure. Um, I feel like I had another question. Yes, I do. Um, Is can we? I'm speaking for the fans here mm -hmm. on, on behalf of you guys at home. Are we ever gonna get? A live jungle concert with oh. I the love, dancers I love the seeing these comments. And I, <laughs> I love seeing these comments. And then uh, I've got an office in Jungle's little studio complex. Yeah. And I read these comments out to Josh. The eye watering nature of that invoice <laughs> is something that you cannot fucking <laughs> conceive. So Jungle sit in a pocket of like, they're a big band. Yeah. But they've also got like a big live show. Right. That costs mm. a lot of fucking money right. already. Right, mm. right, right. Taking the dancers on tour. Is so another big one. Off. Unless, there's one a, off. unless there's a... Yeah. Sa oh, I think one off. Yeah, no. Like I think, yeah, there, there, is, there are conversations. Um, mm. If the Saudis want to sponsor a True. Jungle. So you're not tour. against the idea. It's just think, budgeting for it. Like if you had all the budget in the world, would you take them all on a world tour? I think Josh would do it in a heartbeat. Okay, cool. I think Josh would do it in a heartbeat. That's all we need. And we've <laughs> kind of like, he's played around with it. Like Ghetto Funk came out at um, sure. and Amsterdam. Oh, yeah. And like, yeah. I think the Chase Mar video was like, like we mm. want to go there for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I understand that's a whole nother It's a whole beast. nother, it's mm. a whole nother beast. Mm -hmm. um, there's also someone was in the Instagram the other day talking about a musical. And I think that's uh, yeah. much more of a thing that could be a thing that could be mm. cool it could be very cool yeah because i guess if you got dancers that could also sing the songs mm -hmm. then yeah that's yeah, yeah i feel like cool. the yeah i definitely get that like how, how many dancers was in the volcano it's like 12 or something uh 18 eight jesus 18 yeah taking 18 dancers on a world tour would be wildly expensive but yeah that's, that's i mean the film was wild. wildly expensive yeah i mean the the idea though would be sick because it's like I feel like also, you know, this is one I thing. I mean, Josh's, like, Josh's ideas for like, Josh, like, yeah, Josh wants to make the, like the stage show big. Yeah. Um, but there's always a, there's always a reality you hit of like mm -hmm. logistics. And mm -hmm. I feel like one thing that's really cool about the jungle stuff is that it's like, it's um, in a way that maybe like uh, Chris Brown does or like Michael Jackson or Janet Jackson used to do where it's like, it makes just normal people care about dance mm -hmm. and love dance. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. They're almost becoming dance nerds for the duration of yeah, 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 that. yeah. Um, whereas, like, you get backup dancers in in so many videos, but it's like they're just there as decoration, mm -hmm. and no one really cares, cares. Yeah. But like people that don't know anything about dance or it used to be about like they like my mum will be like the choreography of Michael Jackson's bad is like this, and then like oh, and I remember this, and like she'll know bits of the choreo, and mm -hmm. it's like that doesn't happen unless the director and the choreographer really mm -hmm. go like mm -hmm. smooth criminal. It's like. 
the choreo is what makes that video, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's like with Jungle, it's similar where it's like, everyone I hear talking about it and like, it's almost like dance goes mainstream for a little bit, but that's also good where it's good dance that goes mainstream, mm-hmm. you know, cause we see examples of dance going yes, mainstream. That course. is trash. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Who's smoking smoke. now? I get in trouble when I I'm point auditioning out. for your agency. You get in trouble I when I get in trouble when I point out every so often I'll break cover and say something in my stories and I get told <laughs> off. What about something being pants? Something being bad. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's usually okay. to do with like, I, my beef is usually when they've got like they've got all the amazing people in the room and then the director is just, just like with it. Just ruined it yeah ruined it yeah fair um should we there's a couple of audience questions not a ton but maybe we can have a look it's gonna be controversial no the my, yeah are, the one from i mean oh, i had one person ask like <laughs> five questions oh, oh, hello. <laughs> but they are all like super like nicely creative there's nothing well, like controversial yeah i've got i think my like should you want to go first or should i do mine as you wish sir i feel like mine are pretty simple answers maybe go on, all right so hit me I, t- I don't know why but we have a tendency like we've had the habit of not saying who submitted the thing i would assume I that that's... they know that their name comes up yeah, so maybe but they I, don't, yeah, want I don't to think it's important. Be blasted out on the pod. Yeah. Um, why did you choose to work with street dance specifically? Hmm. I'm not sure if I did. <laughs> <laughs> it just sure happened. If I did. <laughs> Fair. Um, I mean, like I said earlier, I think um, the first thing was very like organic and accidental, and that just like that was literally. Uh, I think it's Pashley. Was it Pashley? Yeah, I think that's what. We, um, mm-hmm. Her just linking terror to a picture that I showed her. Yeah. Right. Um, talk of the devil in shall appear. What? <laughs> oh, um, I mean, passion is not. That is strange. Um. So yeah, I, I, do, I don't think it was deliberate. Um, right. And certainly, as I've gone on in my career, I like to mix it up. And um, a lot of the stuff that Miranda's choreographed for me sort mm. of sits in a different pocket. And I actually also don't know if this is in reference to specifically the volcano film. Mm. It could be. Um, Because I said the director of the Volcano film. So maybe they're saying, why did you choose specifically in Volcano, I guess? And maybe the answer there would be that you've done it before and you've worked Mm -hmm. with... And I I chose um, Shay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) I more chose Shay than I chose. Uh, Yes, Shay was like the natural choice off the back of good times and problems. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, so I think that's pretty straightforward, that one. Uh, the next one is, I mean, I think we've spoken about half of this. So she asks, yeah. what got him to where he is now? We kind of spoke about that, but what advice would you give to people who just started? And I'm going to assume that means get started in directing or wants um, to get started in directing. What advice would I give people to get started in directing? Um, I think a lot of the mistakes people make, I mean, I speak from a big position of privilege because like working in that production company and being exposed to the people that I was yeah. um, like it gave me a, a massive sort of cheat code going in. I think the big, I think the big people mistake people make and like, it's something I'm guilty of, which is why like I still now do like really like my producer gets so annoyed at me for doing like low rent jobs, but like I love to just shoot all the time as much as I can. Mm, yeah. mm-hmm. I think a lot of mistakes some people make is like they're waiting for like the big camera and mm-hmm. thing and they're mm-hmm. like, I would just say just shoot. Mm-hmm. To just start with like your, kind it's of a, what you were saying, those yeah. first versions. It's a muscle. Yeah. It's a muscle. Mm-hmm. And like, I think I think too many people don't exercise it enough. And Could, like, would you say that like, st- if you want to start as a director, would you say that the idea of kind of like getting together your friends that are good at stuff and creating a project based around linking I mean, people I mean, the very and, first thing, like when I, w- when I was coming up, I didn't never wanted to be a director. Okay. I didn't want to work in production. Oh, okay. I had no idea what I was doing. But I've, Probably seen every film that's ever made. Right. Smoking shisha till four in the morning. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Horrible young man. <laughs> but like, so like before I even got into film, I had like a, a film like knowledge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and that shit comes back to you the whole time. And like, mm-hmm. it's uh, having, be, being able to dip into those things is like, people will ask, ask me all the time where I'm pulling these references out of. Mm, and it's like, there's my no. My mind. <laughs> but there's no getting like, like because I was, like all those hours I spent editing, like it's that whole 10,000 hours thing. If mm-hmm. you've actually done the fucking, the work, then mm-hmm. there's like, mm. okay, it comes fluider. So like the more knowledge you can have around it, the better. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. That's a good, so, and uh, two kind of short one. Well, actually, what has, 
what was the oh so basically what changed in the way that you approached creating from the beginning until now what changed about the way I approached creating yeah I think um, we've kind of touched on it a little yeah, bit yeah I mean less heavy handed and yeah I think um, I think at the beginning I was just like just running with it and just mm. making it happen um, and it's weird because there's a like there's a part of that process that's kind of magical that when you start to analyze it all and like I'm like almost yeah like I said earlier like two and a half years sober so I'm like very like in it in a way that like mm. before I was yeah. more haphazard mm -hmm. um I think you just get more deliberate mm -hmm. and you just kind of like see the things that are like because a, a lot of the time it's things that are not obvious that are changing it do you know what I mean like it's, mm. it's something in your pre-production process or it's something yeah. in your interpersonal relationships with the mm -hmm. people that are, have their hands on the pumps that's going to fuck this thing up. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and that's such a like delicate process, especially if you're working with like multiple people. Yeah. So many personalities in that volcano rehearsal room. Right. And like, yeah. especially like there's so many people with skin in the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, years, mm -hmm. like that's another whole balancing act of like that could go left and like you have to manage that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think it's just more about like, as I've gone along, trying to see what those little potholes are and like avoid them. Like the plague. Mm -hmm. Right. But also be yep. sober. Right. Yep, that helps. <laughs> um, we did have... Uh, a town where everyone's getting fucked up the whole time. Indeed. I hear that. And industry. Because they're all, they're, all, they're all emotionally unbalanced and they don't really, they don't realise it. Yeah. Preach I, over. <laughs> no, you're right. I mean, there From was... the world's worst person beforehand, by the way. <laughs> we love a sermon over here. There was someone that I think misunderstood... Um, there's so many misunderstandings. And, Do you know how many and, people I, but I've been meet like because when I went semi-viral on Instagram, yeah. I responded to everyone, yeah, saying like, "Watch the film," and they're like, "Yeah, we've watched the four videos on YouTube together, and they're great. They work great together." I'm like, "That it's is not, not the that film. fucking film, film yeah." <laughs> oh, I can outdo your you? misunderstanding there okay. because, because someone asked you why there's no not enough battles in Milton Keynes, so we will <laughs> skip over that. Um, and but you just had to educate me on battles a second ago. So. Yeah. Charlie, why are you not putting battles on in Milton Keynes? It's <laughs> very annoying. Um, <laughs> pause the jungle work. Um, no, someone asked in uh, back on 74, is it inspired in any way by Bob Fosse? I mean, you'd have to ask Shay. Well, yeah, right. You'd have to ask Shay about his process. Mm. I mean, I would say, like, almost obviously, probably. Right. Um, but how much of that is deliberate and how much of that is like, Mm. there's um so like i was saying earlier we were fucking shay up by changing the length of the yeah. tracks and like giving him different masters like he would have had the whole thing set and then him and ori would just start riffing at the, mir the mirror right. and like that's when you know you're not cool <laughs> that's why that's when you're fully like i'm not as cool as these yeah, people. yeah yeah yeah. like they're, they're making like, this up as and also like they're pulling stuff out their ass and like <laughs> stefano and will are like collapsing behind them right. so like it's like there's a you know, high level of shit going on in that mirror. Mm -hmm. And so like God knows where he's pulling it from when he's pulling it from. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but it might be like somewhere in the back of his subconscious. For there. sure. Um, and again, yeah, like I think when you're working with people like Will and like, like their stuff leaks into it as well. Sure. But yeah, I mean, it's something uh, when enough people have put that together and they have on TikTok, it's like probably whether he, whether he meant to or not, it's in the fucking code. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's yeah, there. yeah, yeah, Do you yeah, know yeah I mean, the yeah. reference is there. So mm -hmm. yeah. Well spotted. On to me. Um, what are the essential ingredients of creating magical vibes? Uh, <laughs> what a, what a well-phrased question. Magical <laughs> vibes. Um, Us I, three. Yes. We, um, I think we touched on it already, but it's, it's essential to have like the best people around you. Like um, Matt Craig, who's my new, like a lot of people would say that your producer is not important, but the stability yeah. and the like, I don't have the code to my bank account, my bank account, right. my company bank account. Mm. I haven't touched an invoice or a piece of schedule. They're also since. the person doing a lot of the communicating with they're the doing people a massive you're going to be working with. Yeah. So if and they can, they can piss people off. Yeah. They can, they can ruin the vibe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Miles away. Um, it, yeah. Having a good base like that to start from is like mm -hmm. essential. And then yeah, as much as possible, try and spot the people in the process that are there for ego and that are there for like, that they want to be seen doing the mm. thing because so many people especially in this instagram generation so many people want to they want to say that they're doing the thing they want to be like they want to put fucking photographer in their bio sure. but they don't want to stand in the rain and get the shot like, they, so there's like so many of that so much of that going on if you can weed those people out yeah um like i said if you get the right people in the room 
you can just Homer Simpson into the bush and just yeah, um, yeah watch yeah. other monitors and just guide it through. For sure. Good people. It's, it's, it is like, without being like wanky and selfless, it is the people. almost everyone else. Oh, speaking of good people, you're working with Joe, Monkey Flip. Um, he just said he's working yes. with you, seeing you tomorrow or something. Yes. He's, he, I said you're going on the pod and he's like, oh yeah, I think I'm seeing him tomorrow. He's, I can vouch for him. He's a good guy. He's stellar. Yes, he's we awesome. love him. Yeah, he's awesome. Um, I'm I'm skipping a few. Why? 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 <laughs> They're controversial. I want them. <laughs> They're not. I'm okay. just not. Well, uh, how should the progress of outfit? They've complimented the costume design basically uh-huh. and said, "How should the progress of outfit development happen? How can I provide exchange between designers and actors, etc.?" And I'm not sure that's a. Is that a you question? Um, uh, the styling on Volcano is done by a very close friend of mine called Mello. Mm-hmm. Um, He's awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, he, we we had a weird process with this where we kind of got it all from a costume hire place called Angels. Oh, which was wow, that's a, all from Angels? Yes. Wild. Yeah. So it was kind of like a, it's an idea of like Josh has these ideas that are usually almost always inspired, but kind of like. Um, bit left field. Bit left field. And everyone has to kind of adjust to them. And like it was, it was a bit of a pain in the ass, mm. but it's also. I think has given it a whole sort yeah. of look and feel. Yeah. And the whole point of the yeah. thing is like, without going too much into it, because everyone needs to go to that, that link. Um, <laughs> we'll put it in the description. Um, but it's uh, like, they're on a TV show. So they're supposed to feel like set looks. Uh, that reoccur. Right, mm-hmm. right, right, right. I had to battle a few jungle fans who were like, it's the same video. Like it was actually really uh, funny. The day back on 74 got released. There was some smoke in the comments. And for once I was like, all right, I've got the time. <laughs> and I jumped in and I was like, it's a TV show concept. Yeah, they're yeah. meant to be in the same clothes. Right. And also like, like they, they were kind of getting- <laughs> Shut up. They were getting <laughs> on to stuff. And it's just hysterical to me that, that they were literally having a pop on the video that was about to go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've resisted the urge to jump in their DMs and be like- Go back. You know, <laughs> check the view count lately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, it's- um. It's an interesting, like, it's a fun bit of styling. Mm-hmm. Um, no, if stressful. they all look it's great. Incredible. Stressful because, like, uh, I think Diddy ripped her pants a couple of times and mm-hmm. there wasn't many replacements. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. It's always fun with the... <laughs> Shay, take the splits out of the choreo. <laughs> <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> we're on our third pair of pants. <laughs> Change And also, it. like, definitely shout out to Diddy and um, Makolo, who are, like, the anti mm. Will and Mete. And mm-hmm. they're, like... Um, and Scandal. that's another thing about working with someone like Shay. He's got a lot to say on casting. And like really went to bat for them. Oh, um, cool. And I'm really, I'm so glad he did because they're, they're both such lovely people. And, oh, uh, nice. And my Michael, Michael came so far. Sick. No, he absolutely smashed it. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I don't, I, I've never met him, but I was like, he, I'd heard a lot about him and it was all true. Yeah. <laughs> Once I watched the film. And he's such a lovely guy as well. Um, I got it wrong where he was from on the pod. So apologies where again. Are you from? Australia? No, you said Australia. He's from New Zealand. I think it's the opposite. You guys just, you guys just be butchering second names. Yes, we do. Changing people's <laughs> just out countries. here acting like the authority <laughs> on a community I actually know nothing about. I would say ninety-seven percent of the things that people have had a problem with me saying on this podcast is just because I've just speculated and just had no idea <laughs> and stood behind it firmly. <laughs> uh, I will skip a few and. Go for it. The last being, how can I provide a healthy, relaxed atmosphere in stressful environments? Ooh, good question. Um, <laughs> good, hard question. I think, like the, mo- I think one of the most important thing is, like, it should never be a situation where people feel like they can't say stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, is a big one. I mean, the the volcano thing was like did get stressful. Day one was very stressful. Um, as much as possible. Like it's your job not to, you're being really bad at your job if you're letting your emotions show and like letting that affect the vibe because it's mm-hmm. completely pointless energy. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, internalize as much of it as possible. Um, it's all <laughs> Bottle all, it up. It's all a quiet panic. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. And that's what me and Josh have to do a lot of. And like, it took us a while to learn that as well as like have conversations away from the people because like mm. when you've got something that big, um, and there's so many moving parts. No one really like has their head around like what's actually going on. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, there's the day to day stuff with the dancers, but like 
me and Josh are dealing with like so many things. Yes. Yeah. Like we're over budget, like da 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 like this plan that we had, yeah. all these things, what we want it to do eventually. Yeah. Um, sure. there's so many moving parts to it. If you if you let that out of your brain to like people in front of it who only have one role, you'll just melt their face. Right. Yeah. And right. they're not they didn't sign yeah. up to they take on all of those. They didn't sign up to that <clears throat> and like it's the easiest way to like kill the vibe. Yeah. Um and like yeah it is like part of your job i guess is to deal with that stuff mm -hmm. so it's like if you're mm -hmm. making it the choreographer's problem mm -hmm. that the costume designer is, you know what I mean? it's mm -hmm. like the choreographer's like well your job is to not let me do it like exactly. i'm here for the choreo you're here yeah to deal with all of it you know and yeah. it's like yeah it's like almost like i guess sometimes how i feel when i'm the person under it's just kind of like it's almost um you're making your life easier mm. by offloading onto me mm -hmm. But it's like, well, now my job is harder and, I, and you're probably getting paid more than me because you're above me. Yeah. It's like, your job is to keep it together. I hear, you know? some, I hear some horror stories about some of these productions, but... I bet, yeah. I and feel like there's a bit of... not. It's not a balance because I don't think it's somewhere in the middle, but sure. I feel like there's something in releasing the pressure valve for yourself a little bit that offers a team insight into why things might be going the way that they're mm. well, I think going. But like, I don't know if that is in like logistic yeah. related I mean, you have info like, i don't know what that like is you have but different dialogues with like there's different levels of like uh like me and gary kent have worked so closely together and we're mm -hmm. so close friends as well mm -hmm. that like quietly i can give him like right. the lowdown right. the yeah. full fucking yeah. the full panic yeah. um but also like i think yeah there's a there's a level of calm that you kind of have to find um which I definitely lost on day one of Volcano. Um, <laughs> it was just way too much. Cut like, to Charlie, right, like throwing right. chairs across it was the way room. Too much. And I just, I just had to walk. I just walked. Yeah. On, I walked mm -hmm. out of the venue. And wow. my producer called me, and I was like halfway through Alexandra Palace right. Park. Nice. Like, he's like, "Where are you going?" I was like, "I just like not I don't, sure. I don't want to somewhere give, I don't <laughs> away give, from here. I don't want to give any of this to anyone." Well, right. that's good. Right. And then you kind of regroup and 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 go again. Mm. But um, yeah, you got to have people around you and like. That's why my producer is like, a, we've never had an argument and we've had some of the most fucking stressful conversations that mm. you can possibly have. Mm -hmm. yeah. And no one's pulling their punches. Sure. Mm -hmm. But like... It's not an argumentative situation. It's a productive... Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and like, and that's mainly just because of the nature of our working relationship. Yeah. And like, um, but you need those, you need those people around you where you can be like completely frank with them and mm. they're going to like guide you to the right um, yeah because if i had an emotional producer that kind of like i basically threw my toys out the pram on like a, a, a small technical thing mm -hmm. and it's his like him putting his arm around me and being like dude like bring it in yeah it's, been, yeah, it's, like, yeah. it's taken us nine months to get here and it's been fucking hell but like mm -hmm. we're here now and like yeah. this is a small thing because that's yeah it's 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 usually invariably it's like it's the straw that broke the camel's back sort of thing and like when you're in it, it's so hard to like, I thought celebrity was a bag of shit. I thought celebrity was a bag of shit for the, for like the stupidest reason, because I felt like it was all starting to sort of go a little bit left. And I'm right. like, ah, if it goes like, if this is day one and it's going this way and I, and I don't stop this, mm -hmm. like it's going to go, go. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, to, to come full circle back to answering the question, it's, it's the people around you. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Um, and like I'm lucky enough, especially in the jungle process, like you've got Josh there, like who's guiding it, and also like knows it, knows it, and like Josh and Tom are also like financing it, so they they yeah, mm -hmm. which is a weirdly like a dual edged yeah sort mm -hmm. of positivity and negativity because there's no box yeah <laughs> sure, the and I think with the people around you, I think the good thing is like on both sides where it's like they don't like let's say if you get angry or whatever they don't react and whatever but also you trust them enough to be open with because mm -hmm. i think one thing that can you know and I, I think we have this in our friendship but like also being on jobs with you is something that like i've noticed where it's like you i think you, you're obviously an emotional person we all are in a way but like mm -hmm. you don't let your emotions guide your reaction i think that's the agent in you you know but mm -hmm. like Let's say if like we can be, I'm thinking of like dance jobs we've done or whatever, and it's like, or dance shows or anything like that, where it's like, it could be a super stressful day or whatever. And it's like, again, I don't have a specific context in mind, but it's the sort of 
a, a tone. A, yeah, a tone. Whereas, like, if someone, you lose your temper, you've like you've, yeah. you've lost it. Really. Or, but if someone else loses their temper, mm. you might feel attacked, and you might go, um, "Okay, well, <laughs> like, let's sort out the problem first, and then afterwards be like." Let's, sort, like let's sort out the problem and then I'll talk about you on the pod. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah for <laughs> or a, like, warranted smoke. we're talking about a business related thing. Mm. I'm not sure why. There's emotions. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah, I understand why there are. I'm not sure why this, like, this doesn't feel like the forum to be discussing them. Yeah. Shall we solve the problem and maybe talk about the issues over a drink after? Sure. What? But in a way, that's why, like, say, say, for me as a friend, right? I can. I feel more comfortable talking to you about serious stuff. Or like, let's say we ever had a disagreement. I don't think we've really had many, but if mm -hmm. we did, I would feel way more comfortable talking to you about it because I know I don't have to like, uh, almost like tiptoe around saying the perfect thing. Cause they're like, Oh, if I say the wrong thing in the wrong way, Tally's going to explode at me. It's like, mm -hmm. I can say it. And if it comes out a bit wrong, you're going to go, right. Well, you sound like a bit of an asshole, but let's get to the root of the problem. <laughs> you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. it's like, because you you are like that. I can just be honest about how I feel. And often that's the the way to solve a problem is mm -hmm. I'll just be honest. And if I'm, if I'm not pussyfooting around, I just say what I feel and you go, Oh, okay. Like you didn't quite phrase it right, but I get the sentiment. So mm -hmm. let's fix the issue. And mm -hmm. I feel like it makes me more comfortable to not get stressed or bottled up. You mm -hmm. know, if we were ever in like high pressure yes. situations or whatever. So I think it's like what you were saying is also, having the right people is not only about them, but it's also about how you feel about mm. that. You know what I mean? Like if you know you can talk to Gary, you're not going to feel like, okay, I have to keep it together. I have to keep it. You can be like, yo, Gary, this is a fucking hard day. And then you feel, you feel more relaxed. Mm -hmm. Everyone else feels more relaxed. Job done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For sure. Um, that was the last one. Yes. Cool. Um, well, I mean, we could, as always with every pod talk for forever and ever and ever, but um, we dog. all have huh? dog. That dog, yes, dog. And My also, dog's been alone for like nine hours. Tally has so to get back to a dog. Um, what kind of dog? A little wolf mutt rescue thing from Turkey. <laughs> I'll, I'll find the a scientific name. That, he, that is what he is. I'll find a photo. Wolf while mutt Luke rescue is thing. wrapping us up. I love a good rap. I don't have. I, I feel so pressured sorry. to do a whole wrap up. Sorry. Um, so everybody, uh, <laughs> no. Um, yeah. Thank you for being here. Uh, super appreciate. We love your work. We're going to keep following. I think now, like even the stuff we've talked about, I'm like, oh, there's so many reaction videos we missed. Um, I do want to definitely check out the link in the description for the full film um watch that because it's sick and uh, i'm so sorry i could not be there at the um screening i would have loved to see it, it awesome. with everyone it was, it was uh, i was unfortunately working because london rent is crazy um <laughs> and our landlord just put the rent up so yeah but um yeah super appreciate it love the work that you do love the people that you bring on um and we're gonna keep reacting to more stuff uh keep us in the loop if there's anything else coming um and yeah i don't know that there's anything else obviously i always say this but like if you're a capsule fan that has never heard of Charlie, go and check out his Instagram and stuff like that. Chances are a lot of the people that are coming are coming because of you. So if you're a Charlie fan, check out the capsule. <laughs> um, yeah, man. Thanks for being here. Tally, as always, thank Appreciate you for being that. here. Love you, we mate. love you lots. And um, thank you guys for being here. And we will see you next week. And that is all I have to say on that. Toodle pip. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs>